Daytona Beach, the home for thousands of tourists this weekend who descend upon the world's most famous beach for its flavorful sea, wide-ranging entertainment. But today, it's home to a fight to keep Celebration Bowl hopes alive as two Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference heavyweights can decide who can weather the tides of mid-October football. North Carolina A&T State is the reigning champ, but just took a bruising at home last week. Will the Aggies take a return back to their winning ways, or are the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman ready to announce their contenders to take the conference crown? It's MEAC football on the MEAC Football Digital Network and ESPN. Kickoff from the world's most famous beach, coming up next. And we welcome you into Daytona Stadium in sunny Daytona Beach, Florida, 92 degrees for the hottest matchup in the MEAC this weekend. The 5-2 and two Aggies of North Carolina A&T State and the 4-3 Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman University. Good afternoon, Nolan Alexander with you here from Daytona Stadium. Larry Wesley, the new inductee into the Bethune-Cookman University Hall of Fame, will join us in just a moment. So we're set for the Wildcats and Aggies in what has been the most physical, the most contested matchup in the MEAC over the past handful of years. A&T has won the last three in the series. However, the last two games in this series have required a comeback for North Carolina A&T against BCU. It was a 10-point lead for the Wildcats in the second half last year. That went to waste as North Carolina A&T had its biggest home win of 2017 and route to an HBCU National Championship. This year though, the Aggies coming off a heartbreaking loss at home to Florida A&M, 22-21, find themselves at a five and two mark. Two and one inside the BA. BCU also at two and one. These teams are tied for second in the conference. So a must win as each team looks to keep its hope for the Celebration Bowl alive. As we said, a sunny afternoon here in the Sunshine State. BCU is getting ready to take the field in its blackout game. It's black Matt helmets with the black Wildcats script over it. You can see it if you're with us on our ESPN broadcast here in just a moment. If you're with us over on radio, it's hard to tell from up here. The Wildcats have black tops with maroon numbers, gold trim, and black pants. North Carolina A&T State comes out with the whites today. White jerseys, blue numbers with gold trim, white pants with gold piping down the side outlined in blue. Gray helmets for the Aggies with the A&T logo in gold. So there we go. North Carolina A&T went the toss to first to the second half, so the Wildcats will receive to begin this ball game in a matchup of heavyweights on the offense and defensive ends. Bethune-Cookman enters today first in the MEAC in scoring, averaging 35 points per game. Second in total offense with 411 yards per contest. North Carolina A&T has made its mark on defense under Sam Washington, the longtime defensive coordinator for seven years before being promoted to head coach this season, following up Rod Broadway after his retirement winning the Celebration Bowl last year. This season, no different for this A&T defense. First in the MEAC, allowing 16 points per game, eighth in the FCS, and they're stout against the run, just 84 yards on average against the run. That's fifth in the nation. As the Wildcats take the field. Again, in those all blacks, cutting through the pride, the marching Wildcats, and down the near sideline. Hot day for a blackout. These 92 degree temperatures really creep up on you here in mid-October, especially when you had a nice little cool front make our way down earlier in the week. So glad you're with us today on this ESPN3 broadcast in the MEAC Digital Network. Hall of Fame weekend here for the Wildcats. We had 13 inductees into the Hall of Fame last night, including our analyst Larry Wesley, who will join us as soon as he makes his way on amongst the stands up the way here to the press box. We'll hear from our sideline reporter, Jamaris Tompkins, who was the leading Wildcat rusher in this game last year. Larry, my goodness, already made your way up here. 
Did you, did you fly? Did you get a police escort up here? Welcome into the broadcast, Larry Wesley, the Hall of Famer. Thank you, Nolan. The festivities are over. We got a game to broadcast. <laughs> I had to use my Quayshawn Bird speed to get up here. In fact, I shook his hand coming up. He's in good spirits, so we're ready to play some football today. Well, Larry, I've given the statistical background of what's at stake in this game, but you've seen these teams play year in and year out. Just uh, what are your thoughts on this series and this matchup today? Always. You know, an Aggie is a dog, mm -hmm. and we played a dog last week, the Bulldogs. And so uh, it's a dog-cat fight always, and these two football programs have perennially have been among the top football programs in the MEAC. So I don't expect anything different today. When a and brings their band down, it's a signature football game, and yep. certainly they are in the house, as are the Wildcat Pride. So it should be a fun, fun afternoon. <laughs> Hopefully the weather holds off and we can get this thing on the way. Special teams important today. Both the kickoff returners have each taken two kicks back to the house. 22, Jimmy Robinson. Might have some trouble here, and they're going to adjust the return as he comes his way inside the 15, just shy of the 20. He's set to return from the right side. We'll see Malik Wilson later for the Aggies. Kicking off from left to right, 38, Davis Rogers. Boot to leather, the pig is a dying quill. Far side bounces inside the 30, turns left and rolls out of bounds at the 25. As he tried to find an open spot on a unique return, it ends up being a penalty. Aggies had 13 of them last week and opened the game with the laundry here. Well, they were trying to directionally kick the football, which affected our deployment of our return people to the left side of the field. He then kicked it to the right, but he kicked a very, very good kick, and it went out of bounds. So we'll take the football at the 35-yard line. So here come the Wildcats marching from right to left, going into the sun in the end zone to our left. A small swirl of wind inside Daytona Stadium. It's pushing out to that left end zone, judging off the flag over the pond. Great afternoon for football, Ooh. truly great. Great mid-October afternoon. Akevius Williams is in the shotgun with his pink towels offset to the right hip. Tupac gets made tailback offset right. Ball to far right hash. Four down linemen, three backers in the box for the Aggies. A&T shows blitz. The shotgun snap a play fake by Williams. Throws a dart far side. It's caught at the 40. Second tackler brings him down right at the 40-yard line as he goes to his favorite target, number one, Keevon Mitchell, for a pickup of five. Spot route that time, around about five yards hooked up. The A&T defense is an aggressive defense. The corners will play press. If they not press, they will attack the route, all at the top of the route. Second down and five after the 26 catch for Mitchell. Three receivers left, snap, a handoff, and he's immediately met in the backfield. A&T ready for the sweep on the near side, and none other than 40, Daryl Johnson, who has his 12th tackle for a loss this season. They are a very aggressive unit, as I just mentioned on cue. That was supposed to be an RPO run uh, pass option. They blew it up in the backfield, didn't the Aggies, and caused a six-yard loss. So we're sitting at third now and 11. Six foot five, 232 pounds for the redshirt junior, a loss of six. It's third and 11 on the first drive of the game for Bethune-Cookman. A minute into the first quarter, the Cats look to go from right to left. Four receivers split out for Akevius Williams. Ismay tailback to the left. Slot in motion, Francois right to left. Snap and a play fake, he's under pressure. Scrambles out to the right. Williams looks downfield, throws a deep pass down the right sideline for Mitchell. A jump ball in and out of his hands at the 20-yard line. Well, I think that's what you're going to see a lot of today. We're going to be flush. Akibis can get away from the rush. He threw a good ball. Akivon almost came down with that football. That ball traveled 45 yards in the air, Nolan, but it's all for naught. We had a shot at it up the sideline, but it'll set up a fourth down, and we'll have to punt this ball away uh, after the first possession of the football game. Started off with a great five-yard pass, but then everything broke down on second and third down. Kashawn Baker back to receive the punt from Giovanni Francis, who punts from right to left. No score here in the first quarter. 13.38 on the clock. Francis second in the MEAC, averaging 43.7 yards per boot. The snap, the rush, and the Aggies block it. It's turned inside the 15-yard line. Francis falls on it. He has a punt blocked for the first time this year, and A&T opens up the ball game with a loud statement. First to goal, or first and 10 for the Aggies at the 14. Well, one of the things I thought, Nolan, we were going to have to match their aggressive 
uh, intensity early. They lost a football game to Florida a and last week. The Aggies want to come out fast. I thought we took a little long that time getting it off. The snap was really good. Giovanni just took too much time getting that football off of his foot. And the Aggies get the short football field inside of the court, inside the 15, at the 14. First and 10 of the BCU 14, a and the short field moving left to right on your radio dial. No score, Lamar Raynard in the shotgun with a tailback to either side. Ball at the middle of the field, four down linemen, three backers in the box for the Wildcats, two receivers left. The snap, Raynard gives left side to Martin, gets to the 10, tackle from his right shoulder pad. He's short of the first down marker, gets seven on first down as he's stopped by Williams and James. That's their power sweep out of the RPO look, run pass option. They got it blocked pretty well. That's about seven yards. A little bit too much for me. The Wildcats have got to set that edge on the defensive side. We've got to make these guys one-dimensional. They cannot be afforded afford to throw and pass the football. We throw and run the football. Reynard in the pistol. Up man to either side, Cartwright the deep tailback from the left hash on second down and two yards to go. Gathers the snap, gives to Cartwright who's tackled by Jerome Howard. Cartwright didn't have much running room at the middle, gets maybe a yard in the play. It'll be third and short to go for the Aggies. Great job by the interior that time you ride, Gilbert holding his ground, the 6-3 uh, tackle from Ocala. Strong at the point of attack, it sets up a third and about three. Watch. Watch the quarterback, he's very, very, very good down here with this football. Third and three, no score, first drive for the Aggies at the Wildcat, seven yard line. 12-18 on the clock, Raynard in the shotgun left hash. Here's the snap, quarterback drive the middle. He breaks one tackle, can't squeeze past the second as he leans, puts the football out at the five yard line. And I think he's gonna be short by a yard with a shoestring tackle by Marquise Hendricks. Yeah, he's about half yard short from where they're marking it. He needs the uh, five yard line. They're gonna go for it. They're gonna come on in with their heavy package right now. He's actually about two, a two yeah, yard shot where they're marking it. Yep. Fourth and two to go as the offense huddles up for the Aggies and the Wildcats six yard line under 12 minutes. First quarter and no score. A&T trying to capitalize after a block punt. They rush to the line. Raynard goes underneath the center. This snap gives to Cartwright, left side, breaks one tackle, breaks another. He's got a first and goal at the two yard line. They ran over that time, over power side. They overloaded to the left side, got the extra lineman in there, just a jumbo heavy package. Get a push inside of the five, down to about the three. First and goal. First and goal for the Aggies at the two and a half yard line. From the left hash on the end zone to our right, they break the huddle, Raynard again underneath his center, offset to the left, toss to that short side of the field. Cartwright tripped up, leans out, and he is marked to the half yard line. Kennedy and Dukeway tripped him up near his shins. Cartwright went airborne over in Dukeway, and they said his right knee was down just shy of the goal line. When I say overload, Nolan, they're actually bringing an extra lineman in to one side of the formation. So rather than having a guard, a center guard tackle, they'll have a center guard and two tackles plus a tight end on that side. It's a jumbo package and they're very physical. Cartwright has only scored once in the ground this year. Same formation for the Aggies. With two tight ends offset to the left, Cartwright, the detail back. The snap from under center, give Cartwright left side and he is into the end zone, touchdown North Carolina A&T. The second rushing score for the senior Markel Cartwright. And the Aggies lead 6-0 with 10-27 in the first quarter. Power football right there, Nolan, and we cannot afford to spot these guys some points. We need to play with them on an even keel. That turnover, giving up points early in this football game is very, very, very important. Noel Ruiz on for the extra point, 24 for 26 this season. John Davis to snap, card the hold, and it's blocked by the Wildcats. It rolls out the left side of the end zone. And Dukeway picks it up at the 5 at the 10, and they're going to rule the play dead as BCU makes it a 6 nothing lead. Cartwright gets the Aggies on the board, but the extra point is blocked. We'll come back to Daytona. After this, it's MIAC Football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Be limp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. 
And it's an early score here in Daytona. North Carolina a and 6, Bethune could be nothing. Larry, the Aggies blocked the first punt attempt by BCU, capitalizing the score. Short field, Markel Cartwright punches over for the touchdown. I'm certain that's what Coach Sam Williams wanted to try to do, get the Aggies out early, and they did that. We've got to come back some kind of way and answer this, answer that return. Kick by Rogers, fielded inside the 10-yard line by Dukeway, cuts over the right hash of the 15 to the 20, and tackled towards the center of the field, shy of the 25. The Cats will take over with their second offensive possession of this mid-October afternoon. Traditional kickoff that time, Nolan. They did not try to play any games. They kicked it deep, but still away from Jimmy. Somebody might have asked, why was that PAT not able to be run back as last week? When it goes into the end zone, it is officially considered a dead play at that point. So the Wildcats will trot out on first and 10 at their own 23-yard line with trips to the right side. It's Robinson, Thomas, and Mitchell to the right, Jackson to the left. Aggie show blitz with their two backers. The snap to Williams, who loses the football in the backfield. Looks like he fell on it back in the 15. But nevertheless, the Aggies have their second stop in the backfield. And guess who? Number 40 with that pressure in the front face mask of Williams off the edge, Daryl Johnson. One of the things I think that will be very important in this game, other than keeping his legs, screens and draw plays to slow down this aggressive A&T front. Big loss in the play. It's second down and 16 for the Wildcats. Slot in motion from left to right. Snap, play fake. Williams throws in the flats. Right side caught back at the 10. Gets out to the 15. Robinson is ushered out of bounds just past the initial line of scrimmage at the 25-yard line. And it'll be third and about eight or nine for the Wildcats. Going to try to play the space that time. Jimmy Robinson lining up in the backfield, trying to get him as many touches as they can. The Wildcats any way that they can. That time out of the backfield with the flower out. Six nothing Aggies lead under 10 minutes in the first quarter. From the right hash, third and eight. BCU a four receiver set. The shotgun snap. Williams has in the pocket. Dumps it off near side. It's caught at the 25, gets to the 30. Jimmy Robinson to the 35. And out of bounds across the 40. There is a flag in the pocket, though. It's going to be a hole. Holding. Offense. Number 63. 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. Holding is the call, as you said. That's against the left tackle, Jamal Savage, 6'6", 320 junior out of Plant City. We cannot afford, Nolan, to play behind the sticks with this football team. They're very aggressive, as I mentioned earlier. Any kind of penalties like this, you had a first and 10 play that was wiped out. They're going to bring it back and uh, mark it off to the point of the infraction. Now it makes it third and 20. Third and to DeLand for the Wildcats. They'll go from right to left in your radio dial. Down 6-0 in the first quarter, approaching nine minutes on the clock. Four receivers for Williams. Moves his tailback, Washington, flat motion to the right side. The shotgun snapped a twist rush, scrambles to the right, flag down, caught at the 10 by Washington, jukes to the 15, and tackled from his left shoulder pad at about the 18-yard line. See what this edition of the laundry is. It is the third flag thrown here in the first quarter. One against either team thus far with 8.48 here in the first. Procedure problem. Illegal shift, offense. The penalty has been declined, fourth down. And so the Wildcats will be forced to punt for the second time. Well, again, you cannot make mistakes against this ball club. They're very, very poised and very talented, and you cannot play behind the sticks. Everything that you would not want to happen to begin a football game uh, has certainly gone against the Wildcats so far. Baker leads the MEAC in return yardage with 11.7 in 12 returns. Francis tries to get his first punt off. His first attempt was blocked. That was the first time in 2018 that's happened to Giovanni. Snap to the chest. The kick, a deep one off his right leg. Baker takes to the 34. Runs to the near side and makes two men best. To the 35, the 40. Flag down, stops at the 45. Jukes and falls forward to the Aggie 49-yard line along the near side numbers. Penalty marker is down along the hash mark at the 47. It's probably going to be a block in the back where it's marked at about the 34. So if that's 10 yards from that point of the infraction, they probably will back the Aggies up to about the 24. Let's see what the preliminary call is. Turn and return. Illegal block in the back. CBT, number 24. 10-yard penalty. First down. Timeout. 
So Jason Soisman gives us the call. We'll go to break and come back to Daytona Stadium. After this, it's MEAC Football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Pizza. Chicken. Okay, chicken it is. Chick-fil-A nuggets make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. And we welcome you back to Daytona Stadium. 6-0 North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman in a matchup of two and one teams in the MEAC tied for second. Aggies have their second offensive possession. will move from left to right in your radio dial. Following the penalty, it'll be first and 10 for the Aggies from their own 24-yard line. Reynard in the gun. Cartwright to his right. Two receivers stacked on top of each other to either side. Four down the lineman, three backers for the Cats. Snap. Play fake. Throws left side. Caught in the flats. Gets out to the 25. Dances across the 30 and out of bounds near a first down marker. As he hooks up with a slot man from the left side. A good pickup on first down. Call it nine yards through the air for the Aggie receiver, number 15. It's Ahmed Ba. And Ba stacks up again. They stack both sides of the wide receivers. Double stacks on either side there. Second down and a yard to go. Same formation here for the Aggies as Ray Nard. The redshirt senior from High Point, North Carolina, audibles of the line. Now Cartwright offset to the left. Here's the shotgun snap. Zone Reed gives to Cartwright. He runs the middle, the 40, the 45, the 50. Down the right side of the 40, the 30, the 25, the 20. Cartwright to the house. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. Or excuse me, that's Jermaine Martin, number 30, up through the gut. Martin, the redshirt sophomore from Conway, South Carolina, scores for the fourth time, and it's 12-0 Aggies, 7-28 here in the first. And that was just a bust on our part that time. Simple RPO zone read right there, and they brought they uh, blocked it really well. We did not have gap integrity right there, and it goes to the house. We've seen that play before by these Aggies against the Wildcats. Got to do a better job. It's the longest rush of the season for Martin. This extra point, flag is down, is good, and we'll wait on the flag. Nolan, that was shades of Tariq Cohen. That's why I said we've seen it before. The outstanding uh, former Aggie who plays now for the Chicago Bears. But that was just a, a great job of their blocking, and we did not hold our gap integrity. We're not sound there, so we give up a big gash just like that. The extra point is good. That's so a personal foul against Bethune Cookman against Devin James for leaping will be assessed on the kickoff. Aggies make it a 13-0 lead on a 67-yard rush from John Main Martin, 5'10, 199, the redshirt sophomore in. Speaking with North Carolina a and broadcaster Don Aware beforehand, he said Martin, the transfer from Coastal Carolina, he's the lightning to the thunder and lightning between him and Cartwright. Yeah, Cartwright, Cartwright is more of a, uh, of a pound slasher. This kid here can take it to the house. He's just sort of great speed. They blocked it up really, really well. And uh, uh, the momentum is clearly on the side of the field of the Aggies right now. Bethune needs to get something. You may have to watch right now at this, at this penalty, Nolan, expect onside kicking or anything right here. Or do they just go kick it out of the end zone? And uh, that defense is playing really, really well for the Aggies. We do not have a first down in the game yet. Bethune We're in right in between the center, Malik Johnson, the right guard, Briante Matthews. Davis nestles the football at midfield, kicking off from left to right. Sends the pick flying end over end, and it will sail about halfway through the end zone and picked up by the referee in the back, and the Wildcats will take over on their third offensive possession at the 25, down 13 to nothing, 7.28 in the first quarter. And you know, no, I came into this football game feeling that a t would definitely be the wrestler here and try to get out early, which they have. The gorgeous uh, bounces on the part of the Aggie, uh, Aggies uh, defense blocking a punt, and then a great job of executing on their offense. And Wildcats uh, seem to be sleepwalking. So we're starting this game like we did against Mississippi Valley, but this is a much better opponent than the Delta Devils. We have got to get our act together real quick. BCU has now been outscored by 24 points in the first quarter, while North Carolina A&T is now outscoring the opposition 58 to 16. Wildcats again will move from right to left, and Dwayne Brown, the right guard, number 57. He's asked to leave for the equipment violation. He's incredulous as to what for. 
Well, the backup take... charge is in. That's 75 for the Wildcats. Troy Wilkins, the second. Wow. Nothing has gone right so far. I got to change this. Shotgun for Williams. Jimmy Robinson, tailback set to the right. Option to that side. Shoves to Robinson, the 20. The 25 down the right side of the 30. Breaks tackled, 35. Robinson at the 40. And tussled up around the 45-yard line. Biggest rush of the day for the Wildcats. And the initial first down of the game by the Wildcat offense. Got to get that football in 22's hands any kind of way that you can. It's the fourth rush of the season for Jimmy Robinson, a converted wide receiver who moved to tailback some after Quayshawn Bird went down in Indianapolis. What is going on with this equipment violation? What does he have on that he can't have on? Brown has to come out again. He came back on briefly, went back out. It's a pickup of 19 yards for Jimmy Robinson. First and 10 for the Cats, moving right to left at their own 44, down 13-0 midway through the first. Mallard motions to the left side. Give to Robinson, sweep to the left side. Robinson breaks tackle to 43 and tackled at the 45, a gain of maybe two on the play. As the rover, number two, Jamal Darden, a redshirt senior, has the stop for A&T. Well, you're playing uh, this particular series without your best offensive lineman. There's nothing wrong with him. Health-wise, he's got an equipment problem, and so they're trying to address, uh, address that situation. Give Jimmy one on the fly sweep the second time. Uh, he runs that sweep out of the backfield. Empty set here for Akevius Williams on second down to 9-3, right two left. Aggies bring a blitz, throws near side. It's caught by Jackson, the Aggie 45 at the 40 and out of bounds with a first down on a pass that was almost intercepted by the Aggie quarterback in and out of the hands of Mac McCain the third. That's all-American. Mac McCain, he read it really quickly. A guy that aggressive, he's got to make some double moves on him. He will, he will see the route developing. He studies it really well. This kid's going to play on uh, Sunday in two years. Pick up of 17 through the air, Jackson motions right side. Jet sweep to Jackson, turns up at the 40, and he's sandwiched down at the 40-yard line. Loses a couple on the play as a pair of Aggies get in there, including the Mike linebacker, Kyan Howard. It's going to be very difficult to beat these guys, you know, uh, to, to the edge. They run really well. They support the run really well. I think you're going to really have to use misdirection uh, against the Aggies, using that uh, aggression that they have against them. And just like you saw McCain jump the route, Nolan, you got to have some, mm -hmm. some double route, some double moves to kind of separate a loss of two on the play, second down and 12. 13 to nothing, a and leads. Cats driving nearing five minutes in the first quarter. At the Aggie 39, empty set for Williams. Man comes after him back at the 50, just lobs it right side, and it's incomplete on the Aggie sideline at the 40-yard line. There is a receiver in the area, well, Stephon Francois, but Williams was under major duress back at midfield as the defensive tackle, Justin Cates, came in unscathed. Nolan, they saw the film last week that South Carolina State had against us in the second half. They're bringing the middle backer late, and that, that pressure's coming directly up the, up the gut in front of the face of Keys. Third and 12 for Bethune-Cookman, four receivers for Williams. The shotgun snap, good pocket, throws right side, caught along the seam, right at the first down marker, puts the football out to spot it. And the ruling is going to be he's down at the first down marker. That's Stephon Francois. By the line judge on the far side, he marks the ball dead. The Aggies picked it up as if it were a fumble. Well, there's an Aggie down further back at the 20. I don't know what happened there. Runner being down. Second down. Couldn't be second down. It was third down just then. Well, that was third down. Yeah. If, we're, if we're backtracking, Terry Sims might not say a word on the sideline. I'm sure Sam Washington thinks otherwise for North Carolina A&T. 13 to nothing. The Aggies lead 455 here in the first. And it's going to be fourth and inches to go for BCU. And with that, we'll step aside momentarily and come right back to Daytona Stadium. It's MEAC Football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. It's a first and ten for Bethune. Cookman pick you back up here in the first quarter. Wildcats down 13-0. A give is to Ladarian Wilson, who tries the left side. He loses a yard in the play. And the Wildcats will have second down and 11, driving inside the Aggie 30-yard line under five minutes here in the first quarter. 13-0 A&T leads. Two different defensive approaches. Bethune Cookman is a, uh, is a catch defense in terms of read. Uh, and, and take the block and read. The a t Aggies want to play in your backfield, and they're very aggressive with their front seven. 
Second down and 11 for Bethune Cookman. Four receivers for Wilson. Williams, excuse me. Wilson motions flat near side. The shotgun snap. Backside pressure by Johnson. Throws right seam. It's caught near the first down marker. Another strike by Akevius Williams as he goes back to Stephon Francois. His second catch. This one goes for 12 yards. First and 10 BCU. That's a spot route, a zip pass by Akevius on the spot. And I mean just like that, first and 10 Wildcats. BCU is driving, first and 10 for the Wildcats at the 16-yard line. And the far right hash driving on the end zone to our left. Three receivers to the wide side of the field, ball at the right hash. The snap to Akevius Williams, fakes the tailback, cuts up the middle at the 16, and he is planted. Right there, not much running room for Akevius Williams, who gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, the Aggies are real stout. Like I said, they truly want to stop the run. That's Sam Washington's mentality. He's going to keep those backers in the box. You're going to have to kind of beat them over the top with short passes or double moves. We're probing right now, Nolan, trying to figure this thing out. We go with a three-by-one set right now. Second down and 10 for Akevius Williams. Three receivers to the left. There's early movement and the flags come flying. Full start offense for 63. Second down. And so it's the third penalty against Bethune Cookman, a Wildcat team that a week ago, when it came to penalties, fared a little bit better against South Carolina State off, against the offsides. There was five offsides penalties against the Wildcats, just three outside of that realm. Second procedural penalty against Jamal Savage, the uh, sophomore out of uh, Tampa, Florida. 13-0, the Aggies lead, 235 and ticking down here in the first quarter. Second and 15, a low snap. Williams picks it up, drops back, throws middle of the end zone, in and out of an Aggie hand at the front of the end zone, almost intercepted by one of the cornerbacks, Amir McNeil, number 24. Yeah, he undercut the route. It was a post route in the end zone, and he uh, played it beautifully, just did not make the interception. He undercut the route that Akibis was throwing. Somehow right here, the Wildcats need to try to find a way to get this football in the hands of, uh, of Jimmy Robinson. 2.21 to go in the first quarter, 13-0. a and leads the tight end. Mallard checks out. Stephon Francois, slot left who just came in from John Thomas, interior receiver to the left. Jackson out wide. Kiva Mitchell all alone, short side of the field. Ball at the right hash. Williams moves his tail back to the left. They blitz from the right side. Akevia steps up, and he goes down in the backfield. The Aggies get a sack, drop him for two-yard loss in the play. Back at the a and 24-yard line, it's fourth down BCU. Well, as soon as we showed that look, they looped the linebacker to the outside away from the strength of the formation, the three-by-one, and he came clean that time. He slid from his inside linebacker position to the outside and got great pressure. Nobody was there to account for him. This was set up a 40-yard field goal by Uriel Hernandez. Right at 40 yards for Uriel, the senior out of Homestead, Florida. He's three for four on the year with a long of 46. This on the end zone to our left. Snap, hold, Hernandez's kick. It has the distance, doesn't have the accuracy, and it does, and the Wildcats are on the board. The minute 33 to go in this first quarter. The score now 13 to three, North Carolina A&T. Leads Bethune Cookman. It's a three-member broadcast crew. We've got Jamaris Tompkins down on the sidelines. Let's send it down to JT and see if we can get an update from JT. Up. Oh. All right, looks like we're having some technical difficulties with that sideline. Mike and JT down there, 13-3. BCU trails North Carolina a and a good answer there for the Cats. Wes. Yeah, good drive, good time to get some points on the board. I watched Euro kick all week long here at the stadium uh, practice. He's really showing his leg off the roof right now. That was 40 yards, but he's probably good for about 50. But more important, the Wildcats get on the board. We've got to find a way to stop the Aggies uh, on defense here and uh, get a turnover ourselves. 
Giovanni Francis to kick off from right to left. Malik Wilson back to return for North Carolina A&T. Francis toss up the left hand, then the right approach to the pigskin. And sends it fly to the end zone to the left, end over end and deep as the Aggies will field it three yards deep and bring it out. To the five, near side of the 10. To the 15, Wilson tripped up at the 20 yard line. Where he's turned up there by Deontay Mayo and Vernon Walker the third. Great kick off that time by Giovanni, about two yards deep. Good coverage kick, good high, good high kick, and the Wildcats got down there to knock the Aggies down right on about the 20 yard line. Now let's see if that defense, that Wildcat defense, can in some kind of way get a three and out, possibly stop the Aggies. First and 10, North Carolina A&T as the Aggies will drive from left to right. Another Jermaine week. Martin took it in from 67 yards in the first drive for A&T, a minute 25 here in the clock. And we've got to find a way to shut that run game down. We cannot give up those kind of gashes in this game. Carter at the tailback for Reynard. Ball at the near hash to the 20. Two receivers to the left, two bunched together to the right. Snap at his knees, steps up, throws far side of the field, complete the first down marker and more out across the 35 as he goes to 81 Ron Hunt with a first down to the Aggie 37-yard line. Ron had a big game last week against Florida A&M. So we got to be able to corral him. Marina can throw the football, we know that. Pickup of 17 yards through the air, ball at the left hash. Aggies working quickly, up by 10 in the first quarter. Short pass left side, caught to the 39, breaks the tackle and slung out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That time goes with 19. Zachary Leslie, the leading receiver, redshirt sophomore out of Lawndale, North Carolina. Yeah, Leslie blew up, uh, blew up the earlier this season, blew up by showing up uh, uh, at practices, making circus catches. I was talking with the coach, Sam Washington, and he was saying this kid's got all kind of ability, and they're looking forward for big things out of him. Second and short for the Aggies, driving from left to right under a minute left. Two receivers stacked on top to either side for Reynard at the left hash. Cartwright is tailback. Here's the snap. Steps back, throws a deep pass down the right side, has a man. It's caught by Bell with the Wildcat 35. Tries to break a tackle as he brings a cat for a ride to the 25 and muscles his way to the 24. Another first and 10 for A&T. And, you know, Bell is one of the bigger receivers in the conference. The kid is about 6'2". He's about 220 pounds. He's a load. Bell with the reception. Had a big game against us last year. We've got to find a way to neutralize these, uh, these wide receivers and not give up chunk yardage like we're doing right now. And that will conclude the first quarter as it belongs to North Carolina A&T, and the Aggies are driving for more. 13-3 A&T leads when we come back to Daytona Stadium. It's MEAC football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. I'm going to take care of it. Ray Donovan, season premiere Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. And we welcome you back to the world's most famous beach. It's a 13-3 lead for North Carolina A&T over Bethune-Cookman. Nolan Alexander joined by Larry Wesley. And Wes here, the Aggies driving with a first and 10 to the Cat 24 towards the left end zone. I think you're going to see a little running down here as well. Reynard in the shotgun, tail back to the right. A couple of receivers to the left. Pitch short side of the field. Cartwright jukes at the 25 and takes a couple of cats with him as he muscles out to the 20-yard line. Stopped by Walker and Marquez Ford. Well, they run a little quick option that times in the short side of the football. Feel like a little short pass to the back. Cartwright gets a good block on the edge. They get about five. We've not been able to sustain uh, our edge defense rushing, and uh, they've been making yardage on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's the fifth carry for Cartwright now at 11 yards. Second down and five to go the Aggies. Right hash. Two receivers to the left for Raynard. And their white jerseys driving against the Cats, and they're all blacks. He throws down the right seam, caught at the five, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. As he hooks up with number 84 for the Aggies and his way into the end zone, Quinzel Locker. That's too easy. That's a throw and catch right there. The Wildcat defense is going to have to make some adjustments really quickly. If this ball game will get away from them, they're already trailing right now 20-3 uh, to 3 with the pending PAT. Lamar Reynard has his 13th touchdown pass of the season. Lockhart is first receiving score for the Aggies. Breeze on for the extra point. It deflects at the line of scrimmage and rolls off incomplete into the back of the end zone. But A&T extends its lead 19-3 over BCU. 
Yeah, good job uh, uh, up front trying to block that with a piece of it. It was a low kick, but the Aggies make no mistake about it. Uh, they're offensively attacking our defense really well. And we're going to have a hard time in this football game unless our defense can make some stands. We're playing with our, probably our best linebacker today. We have not mentioned that, but Marcus Hendricks has not been on the field in this football game. All right, let's send it down. Jamar's talking to the sideline. JT, what you got? All right, thanks, Nolan. Listening on the sideline, the guys are having issues with communication. A lot of guys, they've never played this type of game where it's as physical with this type of team. But knowing that we have a lot of young guys on, on the O-line and in the backfield, basically they have to gel together, have great communication, and, be, and still play physical. If they play physical, the guys will be able to keep up. On, on Defense, communication remains pretty good. The guys should still be able to play good. So having communication and just really connecting with one another and staying physical is how they'll be able to keep up with A&T. Back to you, Nola. All right, JT, that's great insight from the former Wildcat who played in this game last year in Greensboro. 19-3, the Aggies lead. Kickoff from right to left. A line drive left side. Bounces at the 1. Taken by Robinson, the 10. At the 15, Robinson gets to the 20, and he's swallowed up at around the 22. That was another line drive kickoff that time, and I mean, we, we filled it really well. Jimmy looked like a, a, a second baseman feeling that <laughs> one off the turf, and uh, we get it out to about the 23-yard line. But the play clock will be kept on the field. I thought something's wrong with the scoreboard. They've not been adjusted yep. to score all the time. 19-3 to is the score. Bethune-Cookman trails North Carolina a and who just heard the game clock and the play clock being helped on the field by the referees. So that's going to be an adventure here in the booth, an adventure for you on ESPN3. So bear with us here, folks. First and 10 for the Cats going left to right at their own 22. Williams in the gun, Ismay to the right. Fakes, throws down the middle, caught by John Thomas across the 30 and a first down to the Wildcat 34. 12 yards through the air in the first catch for John Thomas. Well, the Fabio Rattlers last week uh, threw the football very well on this a and uh, defense uh, over the top and made great yardage there. In fact, that uh, throwing catch set up the field goal to win the game, so the Wildcats may find something in that area. First and 10, Bethune-Cookman down 19-3 early in the second quarter. The snap to Williams. Gives right the middle. Ismay with a stiff arm at the 40, and he's out near the first down marker. He's got just enough 11 yards, just shy of the 45 to the 44. Good run inside that time, and obviously he's trying to move this football on the ground. Cats are on the move, down 19-3 early in the second quarter, moving left to right. Four down linemen, two outside backers for a &T. Here comes a blitz. Williams looks left, throws a short pass. It's caught as Francois scampers out of bounds of the Wildcat 49. Called a gain of five. Yep, uh, they ran a combo route that time. Keep on went about eight yards and out. And uh, you see John Thomas underneath uh, in front of a &T bench. Again, staying ahead of the, the sticks. Second down on the five. Uh, good play call right here. Ball at the far left hash for Bethune Cookman. Two Receivers left, two to the right. Williams claps, here's the snap. Ismay on a sweep to the right side, crosses midfield and falls forward inside Aggie territory to the 47. Just a yard to go to move the sticks again, third and short for the Cats, another, down 19 to three. Another good run that time, RPO look, we get it to Tupac, he gets about four, third down and about one. We're in the Aggie territory, but a good looking drive right now, mixture of run and pass, good play calling by Alan Suber. Mitchell receiver to the left, it goes Thomas, Francois, and Jackson to the right as the Cats turn to the near sideline. Third down and a yard to go. It may set for Akevius Williams. Here's the snap. He gives Ismail a first down and more, bringing Aggies with him. Takes it down to the A&T 41-yard line. Good running by Tupac Ismail. He'll probably be spelled right now. See number 34 coming in, Isaac Washington. Good blocking up front, but it's the first and 10 for the Wildcats staying on schedule down to the 41-yard line of the Aggies. 19-3, North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman early in the second quarter as the Cats look to move from the end zone left to right. Big game here. A pair of teams locked into second place in the MEAC at 2-1 and one in the conference. Mitchell left, same three receivers right. They fake to Washington, steps up, throws down the right side, incomplete at the 25. Major contact, no flag is thrown. Terry Sims and the Wildcats staff is irate as the A&T 
cornerback Tamandre Abram almost decapitated the slot receiver for the Wildcats, Jimmy Robinson. Uh, they call it no contact, but it was certainly close up here. Looked like it was early contact on that play. All for not second and ten. Second down and ten after the Williams incompletion. He's now nine for thirteen in the ball game. Aggies show blitz from the left side of the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Williams gives him the ground to the left side, and a pair of Aggies stop the tailback for maybe a loss of half the yard. Isaac Washington doesn't get much of anywhere as Daryl Johnson and Sam Blue combined for the Aggie stop. It's third and long Bethune-Cookman, 19-3 A&T leads here early in the second quarter. That was a big call on first down with no call there. We get nothing on second, so now we're third and long. These are the play calls that are real tough. You don't want to be this far down and down in distance. Trips to the right, one receiver left from the left hash. The shotgun snap to Williams, steps up in the pocket, scrambles to the left side, throws to the 25-yard line, far side, makes the catch. Did he stay in? No. It's ruled incomplete as he tried to find Francois. Fourth and 10, Bethune-Cookman, and here comes the Wildcat punt unit. Well, we flushed that time, that uh, keep uh, Akivas, but we had a little room to run it. He decided to throw it. Did not make the connection, so we got to probably punt it away. A promising drive comes to a scrunching halt right there. The Aggies bow their backs up. We'll have to punt it out. Francis has had one punt block that led to A&T's first touchdown. Second one went for good distance. Baker to return sun in his eyes as he stands at his own eight-yard line left hash. A snap to Francis. Sends a high sky punt to the left side. And it's caught by a Wildcat at the far side of the six-yard line. And the Aggies will be backed up deep in their own territory as Robinson downs it. We'll come back to Daytona Stadium after this. It's MEAC Football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Ray Donovan, season premiere Sunday at 9. Only on Showtime. Start your free trial. 19-3 is the score. North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman 8-47. In this second quarter, the Aggies are backed up deep inside their own territory at their own six-yard line, looking to move from right to left, sun in their eyes. Reynard in the shotgun, Martin offset to the left. Snap, runs to the left side. It's a sprint draw. Give to Martin, who lunges out to the 10-yard line. They give him the 11. He's stopped by Devin James and Trenton Bridges, a pickup of about five for the transfer from Coastal Carolina on first down. Yeah, he's a good-looking running back right there, and they're trying to run this football out of the shadows of their end zone on the Aggies, but the Wildcats desperately in need of a stop. Second down upcoming here for North Carolina A&T. Cartwright, the tailback to the right of Reynard. Four receiver set two to either side for the red shirt senior of High Point, North Carolina. This snap, there was a quick pass to the right side, caught a first down and nearly a broken tackle. As the Aggies will move the sticks, Ron Hunt, number 81, reels it in. Well, they uh, have big receivers, and our uh, cornerback's a little bit on the smaller side. That time working against Elliott, and uh, they get the first and ten easily and almost got out of that tackle, as you said, Nolan, for more yardage. Under eight minutes here in the second quarter, 19-3 North Carolina A&T leads. The Aggies struck first after a block punt and haven't looked back. No, they've not been slowed down by this Wildcat defense yet. Cart right to the left of Reynard. Tied in, receiver to the right, two spread out to the left, ball at the right hash. Reynard play fix, rolls to the wide side, throws on the run. It's caught inside the 25-yard line, then nothing there as Duran Maxwell is quick to bring down. Number 88, Malik Wilson, a short game. And Maxwell, a big cornerback, transferring in out of Juju uh, College and uh, comes up and we knock him down for five yards, though. Second and five. Second and five for the A. He's got a little bit more than I thought initially. Four down linemen, three in the box for the Cats. Play fake, Reynard throws down the middle, incomplete at the 35. A late flag comes in from the side judge as Elijah Bell was wrapped up by the defender along the near side. Uh, the side just threw that one in there. Almost looked like the play that we didn't get the call on, so they're going to give him a first and ten. It was a quick slant route off of the RPO. They like that play going to, to Bell. He's a big kid, 6'2", 220, the junior wide receiver. Defense, number 15. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. That's called on 15, Kyle Smith. I think he was referring to 28, Henry Miller, who's that's, the cornerback. I don't know how 28 and yeah, 15. Yeah, I think, I think uh, he <laughs> get, got his. Get confused, but that's on Miller. And, Larry, I echo your sentiment. 
I don't necessarily disagree with the call, but I think the frustration for the Cats sideline came on the no pass interference in the previous drive. You've got to have some consistency, consistency with your calls. First and 10 for the Aggies, their own 35, moving right to left up 19 to 3 here in the second quarter. And a flag down off the motion. It will be an illegal procedure against A&T. Offense, number 62, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, the Aggies had a ton of penalties last week, but they've been pretty clean in this football game so far. A lot of personal fouls last weekend against uh, A&T uh, and FAMU. But uh, today they've been much cleaner uh, so far in this football game. But the bigger concern for Wildcat fans is our defense finding a way to at least slow down something that A&T is doing. They're running it and throwing it with their very athletic quarterback, Lamar Renard. That was called a Malik Johnson, the center. Second penalty for the Aggies after having 13 penalties for 131 yards a week ago. First and 15, A&T up 19 to three, second quarter against BCU. Renard in the shotgun. Quick play fake, deep drop, unloads a deep pass down the right seam, incomplete. Overthrew his intended man at the 40. He wanted number four, Arzea Hicklin. Yeah, Cats Hicklin. were in the coverage, including Devontae Lawrence and Kennedy and Duque. Yeah, Nolan Hicklin was in the slot that time. He was running the seam route up the seam. Uh, they had a, an additional receiver on that side, on the outside running the out route about 15 and out. But uh, Renard missed badly on that throw, but he was looking for the home run shot. Second down and 15. Lamar Reynard just had his first incompletion, now 7 for 8 for 97 yards and a score. Martin tail back to the left and a four receiver set. Give to Martin, sweep to the right side. He's at the 30, cuts at the 35 outside the numbers at the 40. A first down, he takes a cat head on at the 50 and barrels his way inside the BCU 45 yard line. It's a first and 10 for A&T. Well, what a great run that was by Martin. I tell you, he's a, he's a load. He's got good speed as well, and he's awfully, awfully hard to bring down. They get the edge set to the Aggies, and they bust it out for about a 20-yard gain, 23-yard gain. It's at the Wildcat 43, okay. just inside the right hash as A&T moves from right to left. With the sun setting on the end zone to our left, and the Aggie marching band has made its way behind that end zone. 19-3, A&T leads. Reynard in the gun. Slot motion by Martin in the backfield. Here's the snap, three-step drop, throws down the right sideline, incomplete, had a man open at the 25, but too high for his tailback Cartwright and Duque in coverage. And that was a wheel route right there. Cartwright had come outside, uh, out of the backfield, up the sideline. He was matched up against Kennedy and Duque, uh, the safety, but he actually had a step on him. Pass was over his, over his head, poorly thrown football that time because Renard had what he was looking for on that play. Again, we apologize for those with us on ESPN for not having a score in a time. The scoreboard here at Bethune-Cookman's Daytona Stadium is down right now. 19-3, the Aggies lead. This drive started at 8.47 at A&T's own six. Second and 10 at the Wildcat, 43 trips to the right and short side of the field. The shotgun snap to Reynard. Gives to the right side, crosses the 40 at the 35, inside the 30 as he's twisted up, shy of the 25-yard line. They go with the... Seldom used tailback, 25, Kayshawn Baker, the returner, junior out of Farmville, North Carolina. Got a flag on the play out there after the play was over, or what do you got? Might be a hold. It's at the 26-yard line towards the end of that run. I can tell you this, Nolan, they're using a lot of formations it's that time. The play is a first down. After the play was over, a sportsmanlike conduct off the team. 15-yard penalty will be first and 10. So we're on sportsmanlike conduct against A&T, third penalty against the Aggies. Well, they, they are. that football back big time. Yeah, they the ran out. They, they used a formation unusual. They put the trips into the wide, into the short side of the field, and they ran into the boundary, having overloaded that side and got the edge set really well again for that good run. Were it not for the uh, dead ball foul here, they would have been inside of the red zone. New quarterback in number 10, Kyleel Carter, redshirt junior out of Austell, Georgia. He's in the pistol with Baker behind him, and again, whistles before this play is off. What that was, they reset the football. Mm -hmm. Reset the football, they'll reset their own play clock. The game clock and play clock being held by the officials now. First and 10 at the Wildcat 42. Receiver motions out to the near side, and a flag down on the play. Offense, number 79, 
And the Aggies are moving, but in the wrong direction for fans of A&T. This will be first and 15 after the false start. Well, whenever you change quarterbacks, the cadence might be a little bit different there. Offense used to uh, hearing Reynard's voice count, and uh, that time they jump offside again for five yards. Back them up five more. Aggies 19, Wildcats 3. Midway through the second quarter, another pistol set. Receiver motions out to the near side. That's Hunt. Give to Baker, short side of the field. Jukes at the 45 and stopped at the 44-yard line. Couldn't break the first tackle by the cornerback, Elliott Miller. But still, tough running by the Aggies there. And Elliott having to come up and make a sure tackle right there to knock them down. Very impressed with the Aggie offense. Very diversified. A lot of formations. Uh, great blocking by their physical offensive line. And their backs have been running really strong as well. Carter remains a quarterback. 20 for 33 passing the season. 209 yards. 30 rushes for a buck 29. Second and 12. Wants to throw. Short pass near side. It's caught by Hunt at the 38. Backtracks into the 35. And then the Cats swarm him right there at the 35-yard line. A good pickup on second down. It brings third and three to go for the Aggies, up 19-3 to three in the second quarter. Actually got 10 on that, Nolan, and uh, they've already made the deficit up, setting up a very manageable and makeable, makeable third down. It's third and about three. And so whether they're doing it with the starting quarterback or the uh, or the backup, the Aggies have not lost much of their, their steam offensively, driving again against the Wildcats. Cartwright out. They bring in one of the big men. For an up back to the right of Carter. That's 49, William Simpson. Three receivers to the right. Carter, the quarterback. Power, he won't get there. The Wildcat defense clinches its teeth right up the middle, and the big man, Uriah Gilbert, slings him down from the left shoulder pad. Finally, a big stop, but you got to believe A&T's in four-down territory. They're not going to punt this football away. It's backed up to about the 36-yard line. So they'll come back in, and they'll run another play right here. They get caught right back in the football game. Aggies 19, Wildcats 3. Late in the second quarter, fourth down for A&T. Offense on the field. A four receiver set, two right, two left. Carter right the tailback for Carter. With a hard count, and now he turns to the far sideline. Wilson and Leslie receivers to the left. Now Bell takes slot to the right, Hunt out wide. And, and, and Bell is who they're going to probably go to because he's got a cushion there. Defense. Cartwright motions Defense. deep out to the right side. The snap to Carter. Looks to the left. Throws down the left side for Leslie. Incomplete to the 20-yard line. Batted away with great coverage from the near side by Henry Miller the second. And the Cats hold. The offense will come to the field when we come back to Daytona. 19-3 A&T leads BCU. It's the MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network, ESPN, and the Cat Radio Network. There's five oh eight. I'm going to take care of it. Ray Donovan, season premiere Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Bethune-Cookman was ninth in the MEAC on fourth down defense coming into today. North Carolina A&T converted 50%, but Henry Miller bats the Carter pass away in the Cats hole down 19-3 with 5.08 to go in this second quarter. will now move from left to right. At their own 36-yard line, a four-receiver set for Williams. Wilson is tailback to the left, fakes to Wilson, throws down the middle. It's caught at the 45-yard line, then more. John Thomas looks like he's got just enough for a first down along the right hash. And John's planning a great game today, Nolan. That's about his third catch in a football game for a first and 10. Over the middle, quick route underneath the uh, safeties in front of the linebackers. First and 10 BCU, Cats have it at their own 47-yard line towards the right hash, moving left to right. Four more receivers, middle linebacker shows blitz, then backs away, give to Wilson, who's met by a defensive lineman and stopped at the 45-yard line. We tried to run that quick slip uh, draw that time, and uh, Wilson was not having any part of it. Johnny on the spot, making a tackle for a loss, and the Cats will be behind the chains on second down. We'll be second and about 12. Great play by the Aggies there. 94 Justin Cates the senior of Goldsboro North Carolina gives him a two yard loss second and 12 BC at its own 45. The snap to Williams a four man rush throws near side caught by Jackson at the A&T 48 tries to shimmy off a tackler and gets maybe an extra yard as he's dropped at the Aggie 45 yard line it'll be third and two to go following the tackle by McNeil. Good outside route, outside route. a and playing in that Tampa 2 coverage. They're keeping everything in front of them. We get about eight on that. 
Cats are two for six on third downs. On third and two, Williams under duress, and he will be sacked in the play back at the 48 as three Aggies converge. 94 with a sack. That's Cates for his second stop. And there is an Aggie down, Greg Blue, or Sam Blue, excuse me, number 96. Sam Blue is down also, 95 for the Aggies, has his helmet off. He's a little roughed up also. That's Julian McKnight, another defensive lineman. But the Wildcats are with fourth down on about five now. Do you take a chance and uh, go for this, or do you punt this football away? a t won the toss. And we'll find out after this break. 19-3, a t leads BCU. When we come back, MEAC football on ESPN, the MEAC Digital Network, and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Donovan, season premiere Sunday at 9. Only on Showtime. Start your free trial. And we welcome you back late in the second quarter. 19-3, A&T leads Bethune-Cookman, 3.44 to go. The punt team on for the Wildcats. Giovanni Francis will punt from left to right, awaits the snap at his own 38. Letter high snap, and the righty gets a deep punt off. Baker runs up and watches this one land a yard deep into the end zone for a touchback, and with that, we'll check in on our sideline reporter, Jamaris Tompkins. JT, back to him. All right, Wildcat fans. So after talking to the offensive line and talking to the running backs, if they're able to control the momentum on the field, they'll be able to play together and just start moving the ball. So mainly all the guys are, are they're being hit right now. They're not thinking right now. So communication is off right now. But being able to communicate, these guys should be able to move the ball. Back up to you guys. All right, so there we go. How the communication is the key for JT and his alma mater, BCU. 3.36 here in the second quarter, 19-3 North Carolina a and Leads BCU and a welcome sight for our viewers on ESPN3. That scoreboard is back and working. Carter gives it on his tailback on first down, who tries the right side. Rummages out to the 25-yard line. A good pickup by Cartwright. And it'll be second down and five to go. Well, that's what you want, five yards. The Aggies have been very dominant with the run game and very efficient passing, so they've been ahead of the schedule all day long. Sunshine comes back out as Carter fakes, throws down the middle, tipped and incompleted the 35, in and out of the hands of Zachary Leslie. In coverage, knocking it out loose was Trevor Mary. Trevor coming over, the junior from Vieira, Florida. They've been playing great football past two weeks especially, having mm -hmm. two pick sixes and in both weeks. It'll be third down and five for North Carolina a and 3-12 here in the third quarter. Raynard in a quarterback, a four receiver set for him. Hard count and turns to the far sideline. Cart right side, car to the right. BC has four down linemen in those all black jerseys. Black helmets, black tops, black pants. James shows blitz for his Mike linebacker position. Slot in motion to the left. The snap to Raynard. He throws right side. It's caught along the seam as he breaks the tackle across the 40, inside the 45, and to the 47. First and 10, North Carolina a and number 19, Zachary Leslie. Muscles a first down for the Aggies. Big receivers, very accurate quarterback. Renault with a laser shot there, and the Aggies get the much leaded first and 10 for them. The Wildcats still trying to find a way to get their defensive packages on the field to slow down these Aggies. First and 10 A&T from its own 48. Moving right to left, up 19-3 to late in the second quarter. Low snap to Raynard. Picks it up. Throws to the far sideline. It's complete on a stop route. Then a little bit more as he reaches back out for a first down. That's Elijah Bell. And he will have it to the Wildcat 40. A pickup of 12 through the air. Big physical receiver, Elijah Bell. And when he's healthy, he is a load. And today he looks like he's quite healthy, healthy so far. First and 10 Aggies at our 40-yard line. We're inside of uh, three minutes, almost about 2.15 and counting. 16-point lead for the Aggies. A pair of teams tied for second in the MEAC. Winner keeps its celebration bowl hopes alive. Four receivers here for Raynard. Cartwright to his right. Picks up a knee-high snap, pump fakes. Now throws a deep pass down the right side, incomplete along the numbers. Had a man wide open, but overthrew Malik Wilson. Yeah, that he struggled with the uh, the long ball today, Nolan. His shot passing has been really efficient, but his long ball today, uh, he's missed a couple of shots, has rained hard. That could have been home run shots. That time he had the slot receiver open going toward the end zone, but badly overthrew him by about five to six yards. Second down and 10 for North Carolina A&T with a minute 59 to go in the first half. 
Reynard in the gun, two receivers to his left, ball at the right hash of the 40. Now he audibles at the line. And a timeout taken on the field by North Carolina a and First timeout for the Aggies. Larry, what are you looking for here on this drive as the BCU defense tries to buckle down again? Well, we're trying to get a stop here, but oh, Nolan, i got to admit, a and looks like a really good football team, and they look like a very, very poised, experienced football team. Much of what they've done to us today, uh, whether it be through formation or through uh, their efficient uh, uh, execution, has made it tough on the Wildcat defense. We've got to find a way right now uh, to either get a tackle, take away or certainly limit any points if we can here, nothing more than three. You hope you get out of here with nothing, but, but they've been very sharp running the football and throwing the football. We're going to have to have a little help here, if you, if, if you know what I mean. They've got to put the ball on the, on, the, on the ground or either call some interceptions here. A pair of teams that are 2-1 and one inside the MEAC tied for second place. Five-yard penalty, second down. So a delay a game against North Carolina A&T, fifth penalty against the Aggies for 40 yards. But Nolan, that's, you go to timeout, and you come off the field, you come back on, you got 12 in on the field. How did that happen? I mean, it's got to drive coaches crazy. The Aggies took timeout, came out with the wrong package. Reynard has been electric through the air, 9 for 12 for 132 yards and a touchdown. He's in the shotgun here. Tail back to the left. Here's the snap. Cats brush him. Throws a deep pass on the right side. A man wide open. Caught in stride at the 10. Touchdown North Carolina a and Ron Hunt, number 81, presses in the end zone for his second receiving score of the season. And the Aggies have blown this one wide open. 25-3 over BCU with a minute 52 to go in the first and, half. And that's a bust in coverage because there was not a defender 25 yards uh, around that receiver for the touch, touchdown there. So at halftime, that Wildcat defense is really going to have to do some soul searching because no one should be that free. Marie's on for the extra points. The 14th touchdown pass for Lamar Reynard, the defending offensive player of the year in the MEAC. And Ruiz splits the pillars. A minute 52 to go in this first half, and everything Sam Washington wants, rebounding from a loss last week, 26-3. The Aggies lead the Wildcats, and BCU is digging itself in a pretty big hole in the first half. Well, with 23 points down at half, almost at half, with a minute and 52 to go, I'm just concerned. It looks like our defensive backs are very uncertain with what they're seeing. And you got to trust your eyes if you're a defender, if you're a defender, especially if you're a back. But uh, whatever they're doing, whatever a t is showing us, it, it looks as though it's something we've never seen before because they've had guys open, and I mean really open. They missed some shots, or the score could be worse than what it is right now. But very impressed with what a t is doing, particularly offensively. We've only stopped them one time in this football game. Coming up at halftime, for those with this on ESPN3. Show you the Cat Eye Rewind, get you up to date in Wildcat Sports, a Hall of Fame tribute. This is Hall of Fame weekend here at Bethune Cookman University. And a special tribute to one of our near and dear Wildcat family members who has gone to see the Lord. Aggies will kick off from right to left with number 38, Davis Rogers, 5'10 redshirt freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Jimmy Robinson wants a return. He awaits at the four, center of the field. Righty approaches, end of run kick deep to the near side. Robinson takes it the two and the five at the 10, runs to the center at the 15, and he's hit hard shy of the 20. Flag comes flying in from midfield. We'll see what this edition of the laundry is. Let's count one, did I see two? No, just one. Coming gotta, in from the back he's judge. He's got to have great eyes, the back judge. He was standing at the A&T 35 when he launched that flag. Turn to return, illegal block in the back, the CBT. So that's on Harlan Bazell who throws the flag. A block in the back further puts Bethune-Cookman deep in its own territory. So the Wildcats will start from inside their 10 with a minute 47 to go. In this first half, 26-3 A&T leads BCU. The Cats had their first punt blocked. Instead of being an aberration, that was just only a foretelling, or foretelling, excuse me, of what
Cowboys to come as a and has dominated just about every statistical category in this ballgame. No doubt about it, Nolan. It's, it's been a, a complete whitewashing, uh, if you ask me. I mean, they look like a very imposing football team, a very physical team, but also a veteran ball club. You know, And we look just the opposite of that. We've been probing and trying to uh, find our way, both offensively and defensively. Uh, they look like the defending MIAC champions. Kevious Williams will have Tupac Ismay sidecar to the right as the Cats exit the huddle. John Thomas, receiver left, a two tight end set. Mallard tight end right, Bochamp to the left. And now Mitchell joins Thomas on that left side, and flags come flying as BCU is called for a delay of game. Now each team has been penalized for the delay on back to back drives. Nolan, I'm a, a little bit off the football field. I'm looking at the. The first time out. And so the Wildcats call a timeout. I'm watching First taken by BC. Yeah, I'm watching the sideline. It looks as though a member of the ANT band has collapsed, mm. and they're working on the sideline, uh, as best I can tell, uh, on the Wildcats sideline, because their band has worked their way around uh, to the side of the field before entering uh, the field for halftime. But but they're working feverishly uh, with the uh, individual that's down, and they've got uh, ice and water. I'm looking at both. Uh, uh, buckets of water uh, being applied, uh, 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 ice bags rather, uh, towels being applied to the individual that is sitting seated on the bench. Don't know whether it's a band member as far as a musician or whether it is one of the uh, conductors for the ANT band. And a timeout avoids the delay a game penalty. First taken by BC, each team with two timeouts left. A minute 47 to go in the second quarter. Cats are backed up, will move from left to right at their own nine yard line. Two tight ends here for Akevius Williams. With a snap, he gives to Ismay through the left side. He runs into traffic and will only gain a yard out to the 10. Well, they ran the RPO there, and they're leaving a linebacker at home while a and is spying a linebacker on Akevius on those RPOs because they know how, how well he runs the football. And so uh, they only get two, one yard on that play right there. Now 14 carries for just 22 yards for this Wildcat offense. It's only passed for a buck 93. And it's a minute and 17 to go right here. You want to be very careful because A&T has a timeout to play with, and they may try to hold us here and try to get more points. Three receivers to the right for Akevius Williams. Sweep to the left side for Ismay. Stiff arms at the 10, drags a defender across the 15, and he'll be downed at the 17-yard line. It's third and short for the Wildcats on the longest carry for the junior, Tupac Ismay. And Tupac has been playing well. He's one of the exceptional uh, athletes today for the Wildcats who's had a good game, running really hard. The junior out of late Naples, Florida, Lately High School. He's reset the game clock for 56 seconds. 56 seconds. We'll start on my signal. So about nine more seconds added, 56 on the game clock, 26-3, A&T leads BCU. Under a minute to go here in the first half. It's third and a yard to go for the Cats inside their own 20th 17. From the left hash, the snap to Williams, play fix, throws across the middle, and it's nearly intercepted. Nearly intercepted and nearly caught mm -hmm. also. Teron Mallard, the tight end, the intended target in and out. Be very careful right here, Nolan, because it's still 46 seconds to go in the, in the half, and we've got to punt this football away. Uh, do the Aggies come after us, or do they play it safe right here? We've got to get this football out of here. A&T already has one block today. That came on Bethune-Cookman's first drive. Cats went three and out. Aggies blocked it. Went for a sled ever since. Baker back to return. Sun in his eye the 30. Giovanni Francis awaits the snap from Kendall Bat at his own three along the left hash, punting left to right. Snap to Francis. He gets it off. A cloud burst to the far side. Fair catch wave for and taken at the Aggie 41 with 38 seconds to go. A&T will have the football in two timeouts up 26 to 3 on the road in Daytona Beach. And there's no reason for them, uh, the Aggies, to be a pedestrian about this particular series. Uh, they've had their foot on the gas pedal all day long offensively. I don't see any reason why uh, the Aggies would uh, disdain uh, these 30 seconds or so that they have remaining in this half for getting points. So far, a and has run 32, or excuse me, 30 plays, racking up 336 total yards. 196 have come through the air. As Reynard goes underneath this center, Carter at the deep tailback. And he takes a knee. 
So North Carolina A&T satisfied with a 26-3 lead here at halftime. The Aggies will more than likely take it in and look to keep this lead going into the second half, something A&T struggled last week at Florida A&M. Well, Bethune-Cookman will look for a big second-half comeback. And the Aggies will receive the second-half kickoff mm -hmm. by virtue of winning the toss and deferring, Nolan. So they've got the best of both worlds. they got a 26-3 lead, and they get the football to start the second half after these two outstanding bands perform. So halftime coming up next here from Daytona Beach. The first half belongs to the visitors from Greensboro, 26-3. Halftime up next. It's on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Up to Shred Hate. Learn more at shredhate.org. For over 30 years, you've heard his voice calling the action of BCU football and basketball. And he's a walking anthology on the history of the entire university. He ought to know it because he's lived it. Larry Wesley practically grew up on campus as the only child of Lawrence and Peggy Wesley, co-owners of the iconic Wesley Brothers Printers in Daytona Beach. It was there that he would learn through listening and reading the history of this great university from the history makers themselves. A history and journalism grad from BCC, Larry was the stat man for the Wildcats. He was also a radio broadcaster, writer, reporter, and sportscaster. A member of Kappa Alpha Psi, an experienced educator, Larry is a lifelong learner who's also now a noted college professor in the College of Student Life at Daytona State College. He travels the world as a highly acclaimed clinician on multicultural communications and diversity in education. But each fall, on Saturdays, we listen as he weaves the story of his beloved Wildcats. His passionate calls and commentary on the games sound like prose to some and downright blasphemy to others. But in the end, Larry gets it right because it's all about his school and his team. And the whole world knows it. And so tonight, his school and his team says it's all about Larry. And BCU gets it right too because we are proud to induct this Wildcat icon, Larry Wesley, into the Bethune-Cookman University Hall of Fame, class of 2018. A yeah, special moment last night. Larry Wesley, a member of the broadcast tier analyst for many years, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Larry, a special night for you last night, wasn't it? Really was, I tell you, words cannot put into uh, meaning what we felt last evening, and I don't just my, me myself, uh, the other 12 inductees uh, of this 2018 class. It was actually a, a trip down memory lane with all of the great uh, athletes and uh, uh, contributors to Bethune Cookman's great, rich athletic history on display last evening but I tell you all night long when I got home it was like I was still pitching myself because I, sitting there and being the last one and watching all the people go before me and just thinking about the contributions that those uh, uh, individuals had made was just uh, like a lifetime of accomplishments it really was so special an evening I won't soon forget I can promise you that back with more from Daytona a and 26 BCU 3 at the half it's MEAC football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Ancestry DNA story. Now with two times more geographic detail than other DNA tests. Order your kit at AncestryDNA.com. And it's halftime here in Daytona from Daytona Stadium, 26 to 3. North Carolina A&T has the lead over Bethune Cookman. Nolan Alexander, joined by Jamaris Tompkins, here from Daytona Stadium. Take a look at our halftime stats as we go through the A&T side now. Thus far for the Aggies, 11 first downs in total, 15 rushes for 138 yards. A&T has passed for 196 yards today. The quarterback. 10 for 13 for a buck 87 two touchdowns what do you think has led to his success at quarterback today man he's very he's a very disciplined quarterback man you know he's not new to this anti family he's not he's not new to the Bethune Cookman family you know many past years he's been one of the top leaders in the conference and he's projected as an all-american this, this year so you know Raynard man he's, he's a tough guy man very tough quarterback and very disciplined he knows how to lead very well as a quarterback. 
I'll let you tune in on ESPN3 and listen in on the Cat Eye Radio Network to the final moments of the Pride, the Marching Wildcats, a part of Hall of Fame weekend. At halftime on ESPN3, we showed the vignette of Larry Wesley. For those with us on the radio side, and in addition to TV as well, we inducted the director, Donovan Wells, into the Hall of Fame. You were there to watch the 13 inductees. What did you take away from that special night in BCU history last night? Man, it, it was remarkable, man. All I could say is, man, job well done to those guys. And, you know, in the near future, man, hopefully I'll be there, you know. That, that was always a reason to drive, to play football. And, you know, these guys, they sacrifice everything so we mm -hmm. can have what we have now here in Wildcat country, you know. And just being amongst those guys, the spirit of those guys, you know, they it was so remarkable. Larry Little and a lot of the other guys, man. It was mm -hmm. just so great, man. It was a great atmosphere and just – Getting to know those guys personally was really awesome as well. Well, JT, we'll let you head back to the sidelines. One last thing before we go. If BCU makes the comeback today, what do the Cats have to do? Hey, man, if they stay stay disciplined, play their football, you know, stay focused and gel together, man. The guys will pull it mm -hmm. through, and we just need support of the fans and the band. These guys just play their, their brand of football. Go Wildcats. All right, JT, we appreciate you. Well, welcome back in Larry Wesley to kick the second half second half off. It's 26 to 3. Bethune Cookman trails North Carolina A&T here from Daytona Stadium and Larry as you said before halftime the Cats receive the football after A&T won the toss and deferred. They'll have to kick off from left to right here. No doubt about it. Nola we get ready to start the second half of this football game and uh well chronicled the Aggies of A&T leading it by the score of 26 to 3. Uh, a mountainous of a hole for the Wildcats to dig themselves out of. Uh, we'll see what happens for this next uh, 30 minutes of football. And the kickoff deep to the right side. Wilson brings out the 10 at the 15. Curls to the near side of the 20 at the 25. And he's tumbled at the 30-yard line. The Aggies will take over at their own 30. Move right to left after the special teams tackle by none other than 37, Don Johnson, the junior. He's becoming a, a, a man on a mission on special teams. You know, some people make their mark in football uh, in, in exceptional ways uh, you know, other than being a spectacular offensive or defensive player. And Donald is just uh, a, a heat-seeking missile. He is attracted to that football and does a great job on special teams. Reynard will direct the offense from right to left. Cartwright tail back to the left side. A four-receiver set as he stands at his own 25. Four down linemen, two backers in the box for the Cats. Tight motion from the right slot man to the line of scrimmage. A shotgun snap to Reynard. Sweep to the right side. Cartwright wants a block on the edge. Won't get it as he breaks one tackle and leans out to the 31. Good job out from his cornerback spot, Ty Peters and Trevor Mayer. Better job that time by the Wildcat defense uh, than the well, first yeah. half of mm -hmm. setting the edge, and we were able to get Cartwright down after only a yard. It's gained of, uh, about two. He was getting a five a clip in the first yeah. half. Clouds are blocking this sun right now. It was an uncomfortably warm 92 here in mid-October in Daytona at kickoff. Second and eight for Reynard in the offense from the right hash. Sweep to the wide side of the field again as Martin comes up to the 30, and he's twisted down the 35-yard line, or Cartwright, excuse me. It'll be third down and about half to go. Call it four and a half, five yards for the Aggies. Another good defensive play by the Wildcat defense rallying to the football. This time the play run to the opposite side and we get there in a gang and knock them down for about three yard gain. 26 to three, A&T leads on its first drive of the second half. 13.50 on the clock. Reynard with a hard count now looks to the far sideline. Bell takes slot to the right. It's Wilson and Leslie receivers to the left. He barks at his lineman. Seven on the play clock. Flat motion right for Cartwright. The shotgun snap. He looks right, throws to Cartwright, caught at the 30. Has to beat one man, and he won't. He's tackled back at the line of scrimmage with a great tackle. Ty Peters hangs on and brings him down. It's fourth down for the Aggies. Ty is a physical, strong safety, and that time he made a great athletic play, one-on-one -on -one out in space against a very dangerous running back who only needed about five yards for a first and ten, and uh, we get it down after a game of about a yard and a half, maybe two, and the Aggies will deploy for what I think is their first punt of the game. Yep, it's going to be a punt, but, well, it could be a punt. They're in punt formation right now. It's Michael Rivers. 
last week. Six punts, averaging just under 45 yards as a long of 50. Keevon Mitchell back to return at his own 17. 26-3, the Aggies lead. The snap in the kick, he gets it off a high, but short one out to the near side. Mitchell wants it bounce inside the 30, takes an Aggie roll inside the 20. He traces it with his eyes inside the 15 and down to the 14-yard line. And that's where the offense will take over for Bethune Cookman. When we come back, 12-34, 26, Wildcats 3. It's MEAC football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Introducing the Genesis G70. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Cat Eye Radio Network. And for those with us on ESPN 3, you know where you're toting in. 26 to 3. North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman 12-34 in the third quarter. First possession for the Wildcat 0 in the second half. Larry Wesley, what adjustments are you looking for? Well, we'll see what this offense, what they're going to come up with Alan Super. Maybe it's a, uh, a little more run pass option right now. Williams in the shotgun, washes tailback play fake, throws in the flats near side, caught by Francois at the 19, and Boogie's out of bounds at the 20. And the Wildcats will pick up about five, five and a half on first down. And that's that RPO again. Keep your scoring short, and we hit him on the outside. Quick throw and catch. The Aggie defense playing that soft Tampa 2 cushion. Mm -hmm. Fourth catch for Francois, the leading receiver. Next throw comes right over the middle, incomplete. He went to John Thomas, who tried to climb the ladder. He was covered tightly by the rover, Jamal Darden. Yeah, but the pass was extremely high that time. I don't think that Akeem just got that ball down as far as his follow through, so it sailed on him. Sets up a quick third down here. We need to make first and tens. That's the first line of business here to move these chains. Williams 12 for 19 passing, a four receiver set. Thomas and Mitchell out to the left. Washington flat motion that way. The shotgun snap. Williams steps out to the right. He throws the 25, a toe-touching grab. It's going to be right near the first down marker. Malik Jackson brings it in, and it's going to be just enough. Half a yard past the sticks. First and 10, Bethune-Cookman. Good job by the Wildcat offensive line that time, holding up against that strong ENT pressure, giving Akibas a clean pocket. He found the receiver on the outside for the first and 10. Four catches, 32 yards for Jackson. First and 10, Cats down 26 to three. The shotgun snap, sweep to the right. Cuts to the 25 at the 30, breaks tackle, 35 at the 40. And inside the 50 yard line, a first and 10 for the Cats. Jimmy Robinson, his second carry of the day, the 46. And there's an injured Aggie. That's 24, Amir McNeil who came in to spell Mac McCain the second in the first half, who left with a lower body injury, and he's curled up. He's in a lot of pain, Nolan. I mean, a lot of pain. In fact, both staffs, uh, training staff, the Aggies as well as the uh, Wildcat staff, because it was right in front of the Wildcat bench. He's down, the young man grasping uh, one of his uh, lower extremities. I think it looks like his left leg there. Yeah, they're looking at that left leg, trying to stretch it out right now 26 to 3 is the score bethune cookman trails north carolina a and will take an injury timeout we'll come back to daytona stadium after this 11 51 here in the third quarter miak football on espn and the cat eye radio number And McNeil's carried off of the field. First and 10 for the Wildcats here with 11-51 in the third, down 26-3. Williams in a four-receiver set. Robinson's tailback. The shotgun snap. Williams under pressure. Flags are down, and he's smothered inside the 40-yard line. Sacked for the third time this afternoon. And the early indication is holding against the black-jerseyed Wildcats. Well, they got a loss that time that the Wildcats. The penalty came in the backfield. Held the football a little offense. long. They'll probably decline that. The penalty decline. Take it down. So it's probably good as the penalty. Uh, we lose about 10 yards there, so the Aggies uh, will decline that penalty. Officially a loss of nine. Second down and back over to International Speedway to go for BCU. Four receivers for Williams. He takes Thomas and Jackson to the right. 
and squares out Francois and Harper to the left. The shotgun snap dumps it off in the flats. Robinson Kai's at the 35 at the 40 near side and twisted from his left shoulder pad at about the 42. It's the defensive end, Sam Blue, who tracks him down, and it's still third and long for the Wildcats. Well, Blue can really run that time. He ran a little flare route that time in the flats, trying to get Jimmy out in space, but the Aggies are very athletic and very impressive as they rally to the football. Third and 13 for Bethune-Cookman. The Cats are just three for nine on third downs today. Came in fifth in the MEAC at 33% right of that season average. Same formation for Williams. The shotgun snap, a four-man rush. Steps up in the pocket, now runs out to the right. He tucked it at the 45, takes the defender head on, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 47-yard line, gets back to the initial line of scrimmage. Fourth and about 10 for the Wildcats after the tackle by 34, Deion Jones, the weak side backer. Well, when you get off schedule and you take a loss like that on first and 10, it really throws everything out of Kelter. Cody, offense, number 76, 75, fourth down. Late flag came on, too, with a holding against 76, Kendrick Jackson, who's starting for the injured Miguel Ramirez at left guard. Another declined holding and Francis will look to punt again. He was a busy punter in the first half, four averaging 43 yards of the long of 48. Baker back to return his heels at the 10 yard line as Giovanni punts left to right. Low snap of the knees and he gets off a deep punt end over end. Baker lets it roll at the 11 as he runs away, bounces inside the 10, it's at the five. The Cats watch it to the two. And it is down at the one-yard line by Jimmy Robinson. A big punt by Giovanni Francis as he downs the Aggies at the one-yard line, his 10th punt inside the 20 this season. It's a great job right there of uh, getting that football high in the air. The a and uh, return man moved out of the way of that football. Don't know why he didn't signal for the fair catch. It was a catchable ball. But uh, fortuitously, fortuitously for the at, for the uh, Wildcats, rather, it rolled down dead at the one-yard line. But you know, Nolan, the ANT offense has had no trouble most of the day moving that football, even from the shadows of their end zone. ANT has racked up 341 yards on 34 plays. 10:08 here in the third quarter. 26 to three, ANT leads. Aggies have not trailed today. Khalil Carter, the backup quarterback, goes underneath the center. Cartwright, the deep tailback, on first and 10 at the Aggie on one yard line. And Cartwright moved early. Flag comes down before the handoff as he leaned with his right foot. Ball start, offense, number 22. After this, is a goal, first down. Six penalties for. 50.5 yards. Not much more you can do with that well, one. Well, I'll tell you, and what you got to watch out for here, Nolan, you're backed up. Uh, ANT has big receivers, and a lot of times you put that football up in the air and let those 50-50 uh, uh, balls go in your favor because they've got the size on the outside, so the Wildcat corners have got to hold up in, uh, in this situation. Carter underneath this senior Johnson. Snap, play fake. Carter in the back of the end zone, throws a deep pass down the left side for Leslie, and he's unable to bring it in. Just exactly. past the 25, tight coverage again by Henry Miller, 28. Yeah, exactly what I was talking about because the Wildcats are in press coverage. Both corners are out on the island by themselves because they got pressure coming inside trying to contain the run. So here we go again. Those big receivers that they have, particularly Watch Bell now, 13, he'll be matched up on the outside against number 28 for us, Henry Miller. Henry's at least 6'3". That's a comparable matchup right there. Carter now 1-4-4 four, four passing. He takes to the shotgun. Cartwright side, Carter to the right. Here's the snap. Gives to Cartwright. Sweep to the left, and he's turned to the 1. Falls forward to the 2. Vernon Walker, number 23, was there to greet him back at the initial line of scrimmage. It'll be 3rd and 9 to go for the Aggies. 9-48 here in the 3rd. a and 26, BCU 3. Great job by Walker coming up and run support right there. And... Uh, getting the running back on the ground. Here's a big play here, third down, possession down for the Aggies. They need the 12-yard line for the first and 10. Ball at the a and two and a half. Carter in the shotgun, Cartwright to the right, a four receiver set, four down linemen, three backers in the box. Here comes the blitz. Carter throws right side, incomplete the 15. He bounced it outside the receiver, Leslie, and the Aggie punt team takes the field as the BCU defense holds for the second straight possession of the third quarter. Good job by the Wildcat defense holding up their end of the deal and getting a three and out right there. Now, uh, who do we have back? Is that Keevon back here yep. uh, to return? With the pink towel offset to his left hip. Black helmet, black jersey, black pants for the Cats. Gray helmet, white jersey, white pants for the Aggies. 
Aggies Michael Rivers has be, no room be, to spare. Yeah, there's got to be a punt protection mm. formation, too. Yep. So they may be able to get a good return off this. Snap the punt. A short one here. Cats may have gotten a hand of that one. Bounces at the 30 near side. Rolls to the 35. Mitchell picks it up at the 39 and runs forward for a few yards out to the 35-yard line. And the Cats will take over with great field position when we come back to Daytona. 9-11 here in the third. a and 26, BCU 3. It's MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network, ESPN, and the Cat Eye Radio Network. The ball came out funny. Like it, it got a piece. It M for Mature. PlayStation. 9-11 third quarter, 26-3, A&T leads, and Larry, it's the Bethune-Cookman hoopster, Omer Manzi's first year of the program, who gets a left hand to block the punt for BCU. Yeah, the big young man out of Ever Central High School up in Ohio. Here come the Cats on first down, they give it right up the middle. A gain of a few on the plays. BCU keeps it in the ground on first down. Inside plus territory. Jimmy Robinson with a carry. He's a little shy of the 30. He'll be second down and about seven to go from the Aggie 32 moving left to right. We tried to feature Jimmy as many, as, way, as many ways as we could today, giving him his multiple touches in this football game, and he's running the football really well. Second and seven. Pair of two and one teams in the MEAC tied for second, trying to keep postseason hopes alive. Four receiver set for Williams. Play fake under pressure. Now he steps up and runs. At the 30, breaks tackle 25. Left hash 20, 15, 10. Williams at the five. He's twisted the one and loses the football. There's a fumble in the end zone. It's recovered by the Wildcats. Touchdown Bethune Cookman. Kevon Mitchell hops on it. The Wildcats score with 827 and make it a 26 to 9 ball game. Now a referee on the far side, signal touchdown. Williams is down on the play, though, grasping his knee. Yeah, Akevius Williams, yeah. Williams lost the football at the one. Kevon Mitchell scooped it up right in front of Tamadre Abram. He scores. It's a touchdown Bethune-Cookman. Akevius Williams is still being attended to. On the far front side of the end zone, Kevon, number one, the receiver was throwing him a block at the two-yard line. Akevius tried to bounce off of him, ran into him. That's when he lost the football. Yeah. So we take another look at the replay off our ESPN3 feed, and I believe the refs are taking another look at it as well. He lost the football, and that's when he got hurt too. So we take another look. It's turned there. Watch yep. how he turns. He runs to the left shoulder of Kevon Mitchell, loses the football yeah. then. Mitchell hops on it, but that's when, as soon as Williams lost that football, you can see the pain as he grasps his left knee, and he's still being looked at in the end zone. I think he just got twisted up there. They're, they're testing uh, right now for range of motion in it, but he doesn't seem in a lot of pain. He's lying on his back as we watch there, but it, it's almost as, as if Kivon's hit him and the ball came out. Yeah, the ball came out as he hit his shoulder pad. And then Williams twisted up, landed along his knee. And they're looking at that left knee right now, as you said, for range of motion. And that would be a huge loss for BCU. Williams coming into this ball game. Third in the FCS, leads the MEAC with 120 points he's responsible for. Yeah, leads the MEAC in completion percentage. He's up. Rushing touchdowns, and he's up. The trainers will help him out to the near sideline. The backup quarterback is number two, David Israel. He's got a few starts under his belt, and now Williams is able to jog off under his own power. And that's why you hear the applause from the home crowd. So there we go. Touchdown stands. Kevon Mitchell gets his first rushing touchdown. How about that? Of, the, of his career. He has five receiving scores. But that's the first rushing score for Kevon Mitchell, the senior out of Hollywood, Florida, and Bethune-Cookman. Puts the first sixth spot on the board. Uriel Hernandez has made all but one extra point this season. So he looks to make it a 26-10 ball game with 8.27 left here in the third. Great response by the Wildcats. Mm -hmm. You can see Akevius selling out, giving his body up, trying to get in the end zone. And the kick from Uriel clears the line of scrimmage, and it is good. 8-27 here in the third quarter, 26-10. North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman. 31-yard rush by Kevius Williams, who gets a long assist there. We go back to our basketball analogy with Ulmer Manzi off the deflected punt.
Keevon Mitchell there for the alley for the dunk. Well, you, you want to be solid in all three phases of the game, but waiting for, for Manzi to make a play this year. He does it special team-wise, using that 6'7", six, 6'8", six, length of his, and athletic ability to get, get that hand up and get a, get a piece of it. Gives us a sharp feel, and Akevis does the rest, getting it down there with an assist to Keevon for a Wildcat touchdown. So Bethune Cookman takes advantage of short field position. Three plays, 35 yards, and the Wildcats have their first score. They pick up some momentum with the marching Wildcats to pride down below us. Francis looks left, then to the right. He kicks off from left to right with 827 here in the third and a setting sun behind him, a high kick. But it comes up short, and the Aggies run upfield together. It's Wilson takes it at the 15, at the 20, at the 25, down the middle to 35. And he's slung down to the 40-yard line along the left hash. And the Aggies will have nice field position after the kickoff return by Malik Wilson. First and 10, a &T with 8.19 to go here in the third. 26 to 10, the Aggies lead. Well, he didn't get a lot of that on that kickoff that Giovanni got a little fat on that. And, uh... High and short, they get it out to about the 41-yard line. Great starting position for the Aggies. And, uh, wow, the Wildcats can kind of get another stop here. Who knows? This ball game's got a lot of time left in it. Just 8-19 in the third. Carter remains at quarterback. Jermaine Martin, the transfer from Coastal Carolina, offset to the right from the near hash. The snap, he throws to the right side. It's caught inside the 45, spins out across the 45, taking a whole pack of Wildcats and Aggies with him to midfield. Wow. It's a pickup of nine on first down to the leading receiver, 19, Zachary Leslie. That looked like a rugby scrum. <laughs> I tell you, it took everybody to get him down. Give him nine yards. He's out to the 50-yard line. Uh, but it was with a quick slant, Nolan, and uh, he just did the rest himself carrying uh, Wildcats and uh, getting a little push from his guys. And so the Aggies move it out on the throw and catch out to the 50-yard line, one yard short of first and 10. Three catches for 40 yards for Zachary Leslie. Second down and a yard to go for the Aggies. Carter's in the shotgun, tail back to the right, tied into the left. Two receivers right. Here's the snap. Zone Reed keeps to the right side, crosses midfield. And he falls forward. Ball came out after he was down with a first down as he's tackled by Jerome Howard. Stopped at the BCU 48-yard line, first and 10 Aggies. Well, the Aggies are probably going to want to lean a little bit on their run, run game right now, up uh, 26 to 10. And that clock moving in their favor. Let's see what they do here, first and 10. But uh, could be a heavy dose of run right here. Aggies a few yards from 150 on the afternoon with 19 carries. Lights turned on at Daytona Stadium as a &T drives from right to left at the BCU 48, a first and 10. Carter in the gun, tail back to the left, play fake. Carter steps back, he gets it off a deep pass, left side looking for Bell, incomplete the 16, in and out of his hands along the BCU sideline, Henry Miller in coverage. And Bell feeling like he should have caught that football. It's a good matchup. One receiver is 6'2", the defender is 6'3". So that's an even 50-50 jump ball experience there. But Bell probably had the better position on that football. Carter now 2 for 7 passing for 18 yards. It'll be second down and 10 for the Aggies. Carter seen playing time this year, came in 20 for 33, passing the 5'10", 230-pound redshirt junior from Austell, Georgia, just a little west of Atlanta. And the shotgun here with four receivers. The snap, pump face, under duress, slips out of a sack, and then he's brought down. Tackled from behind, 96, Jerome Howard. Grabs his first sack. Devin James in there for pressure as well. Good job by that Wildcat defense getting some pressure. And the first time we really get a substantial negative loss play against the Aggies, knocking them back now to third and about 17. Howard, the sophomore from Sarasota, had one and a half sacks last year. Now two and a half TFLs in the season. It's third and long, third and 16 for the Aggies. During six minutes left in the third quarter, 26 to 10, a and leads. Four receivers for Carter. The shotgun snap, a three-man rush. Carter steps up, hit as he throws, a loose ball, and it's picked up, then rolled incomplete at the 45-yard line of Bethune-Cookman, a late fight for it. It's called incomplete. 
by the umpire Dante Finger, and the Wildcat defense holds for the third straight drive here in the second half and gets the applause from the home crowd, Wes. Great job. I tell you, they're playing like a possessed team the second half. That defense a little bit shaky, but very much unlike the Wildcat football defensively uh, that we've known. But uh, second half here, they've really come out with their uh, hair on fire, the Wildcats, and trying to make a stand here. Rivers to punt for the third time this quarter. Kevon Mitchell waits back at the 10. 5.58 here in the third quarter, 26 to 10. A&T leads the snap and his kick. A high one to the near side. Mitchell waves for a fair catch, bounces at the 19, rolls down the near side, and out of bounds near the 10. And let's send it down to Jamaris Tompkins on the sideline to get an update from the BCU side of things. JT. All right, fans. The sideline, just listen to a couple things. The defense are doing really well. They're playing stout right now. They're holding up the offense right now. We're trying to figure out what's, what the ball rolling. So figuring out the game plan, just making adjustments, just really getting momentum going so we can move the ball is what it's about. Back up to you guys. All right, thank you, Jamaris Tompkins. And Akevius Williams comes back in, or excuse me, David Israel in a quarterback for the Wildcats. In for his first snap, Williams was injured but on the touchdown play before. Down at the one-yard line, he's still being attended to. Israel in the shotgun, running back to the left is Robinson. The snap, he throws, middle of the field. It's caught at the 25-yard line. A great grab by Francois back behind him. It's a first down as the Wildcats pick up 12 through the year. Acrobatic catch by the sophomore, Junior, really, out of Miami MacArthur High School. Great catch by Stephon. Israel, a redshirt sophomore transfer from West Virginia, now 17 for 32 on the year and over 200 yards. The shotgun snap gives to Robinson right up the middle, gets the second level, then more across the 30, down to the 31. It'll be six yards on first down for the senior transfer from Mercer, Jimmy Robinson. Extremely strong, very, very agile, tough runner. You wouldn't think that, but Jimmy did a lot of that on his own. Give him about five and a half yards there. Second and a half to go for the Cats, down 26 to 10, nearing five minutes here in the third quarter. Ismay sidecar right for Israel, four receiver set, four down lineman for the Aggies. A high snap, gets it down, pump fakes, scrambles out to the right, he's being chased. Flag down, and Israel lofts it deep into the Wildcat sideline. They'll probably call this a hold and take the penalty, back us up 10 yards. Penalty, offense, number 63. Penalty, down. Sixth penalty against the Maroon and Gold for 65 yards now. That's a tough one right there. We had a drive going right there. Now it's second and about 13, more like 15. Uh, we were trying to scramble outside and throw it away, but we got called for the hook on the hole there, so we're backed up to our 21-yard line. Jackson Francois, receivers spread out to the right. Thomas slot left, Mitchell out near the numbers. Tupac Ismay, the junior from Naples, the tailback for Israel. But a yard away to his right. Comes the snap to David. Deep drop, under pressure as he scrambles to the right side, throws along the sideline, intercepted at the 30-yard line, gets to the 25, and the Aggies pick it off with 44, Julius Reynolds, the graduate. Yeah, the linebacker Reynolds stepped up underneath that. David got flushed to the outside. I thought he saw Reynolds. But Reynolds had dropped back, sunk into his position at the linebacker position into the soft coverage uh, of the uh, route and undercut that football for the interception. And just like that, the Aggies have the football in positive territory at the Wildcat 23-yard line. Fourth INT thrown by Israel. First interception for the 5'9", 230-pound Reynolds. And the Aggies take over with their best starting field position of this third quarter at the Wildcat 23-yard line. Carter remains the quarterback. He's taken every snap of this second half. Trips are bunched together to the left. It goes Leslie, Hunt, and Bell. And A&T cannot get on the same page. Sam Washington takes the T.O. with 4.52 in the third quarter. 26-10, North Carolina A&T has the lead against BCU West. Well, yeah, you wonder about that. It's a sudden change situation. The Aggies get the interception, the INT, and uh, they can't get full complement uh, compliment of football players on the field. So they were missing a line. I think it was the guard that time, so they take the timeout. They're in great position. The ball is resting at about the 23-yard line, 20 23, uh, 23, so, you know, I, I, we don't know if anything is wrong with uh, 
uh, Renard, but he's not played a lot in the second half. He's been in the second half, so uh, maybe they're just trying to get some extra work for quarterbacks here, but they've got a great situation in the Aggies and the red zone of the Wildcats right now. Wildcats cannot afford to give up any more points, Noah. Both of these teams are 2-1 and one in the MEAC, tied for second, trying to keep pace with the undefeated Florida A&M at 4-0. and A&T has won the last three games in this series, but has had to come from behind the last two. It certainly doesn't look to be the case right now. It's been all Aggies, but the Cats have had the third quarter. On first and ten, Carter, the shotgun snap, play fake, throws down the middle, incomplete. What is tied in on a hot pass? That was 47. Eroy Hill, incomplete. Yep, he had Hill coming over the middle there. Like a little skinny, skinny, uh, skinny post right there uh, behind the linebackers. It just did not connect. And Carter gives him a coaching point yeah, there. I, I was watching that. Before he gets off to the field. Carter, Carter said, I need you here, young man, not there. Stops the clock on the incompletion with 4.48 to go in the third. Carter now just two for nine passing. Up back Simpson to his left. Two receivers right, two to the left. Slot motion to the right side by the speedy Wilson. The snap. Carter with quarterback power right at the middle. Breaks one tackle. And then he stood up by Araya Gilbert after just a two-yard gain. It'll be third and long upcoming for the Aggies. Up 26 to 10. Four and a half minutes to go in the third. Good job by the interior there. As I said, the Wildcat defense uh, put in a bind right now, but they played really well the second half. Uh, they were a little skittish the first half because of the a &T, uh, efficiency there, but the second half, they played the Aggies on even keel. The nose tackle Gilbert comes out, an extra backer in, 54, Deontay Mayo. Two right, two left in the shotgun is Carter. Cartwright is tailback, sidecar left. Now he audibles at the line. Wilson Bell spread out to the left. Now Wilson motion, slot right. Here's the shotgun snap. Carter throws a slant left side, and it's incomplete at the 10-yard line. Receiver was Bell, and he was draped by Henry Miller, who's had a lot of good coverage today. It seems like Carter and Reynard have tried to pick on Miller, and more often than not, he's held his own. Well, Miller's played pretty well. He's a, he's a, a, a favorable matchup against Bell, the big body receiver there. So the Aggies will try to look like they're going to go for a field goal here. Field goals have been an interesting case for North Carolina A&T this year. Noel Ruiz, a 5'11 sophomore from Wilson, North Carolina, is just two for six. He's had one blocked. His longest 43. This is a 40-yarder on the end zone to our left. No win to speak of right now. Snap, hold, his kick, it's up. It has the distance, and it is no good. He pushed it off to the right. And make that four straight possessions. The Wildcat D has answered the challenge in the third quarter. I tell you, and they really had to. Uh, they were put in a tough situation with sudden change after the turnover, the INT, by uh, by David. And so the Wildcats don't give up anything. You still got 3:51 left in the third. But man, what a great job by that that Wildcat defense right there. And if the offense can get their act together and uh, get a touchdown, we can tighten this football game up. Don't know where our, where our quarterback can keep this is, but I don't see him. Uh, these black jerseys sometimes very hard numbers to figure out here. <laughs> Israel back on for his second possession. He just threw an interception on his first action of the ball game. He's played in every game this year prior to last week at South Carolina State. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Snap is over Israel's head. Rolls inside the five, scoops it up, and throws it back to the three-yard line. It's called a loose football. The Aggies recover. Flag is down. Now I think they're going to wave it incomplete. This is going to change it from a touchdown to a safety with an intentional grounding. I think they'll call it safety here. BC was running so fast on that one to get the ball off, it almost didn't seem that everyone was set. Yeah, I noticed the same thing, Nola. I thought it would be a penalty on that play, but let's see what the referees are going to signal. Safety. So despite the mic issues, we can tell it's a safety off the intentional grounding in the end zone. Two points for North Carolina A&T makes it a 28 to 10 ball game and not what the Wildcats wanted after the defense held forcing a field goal attempt. 
But BCU will give it right back and add two more to the Aggies total. That's the first points for A&T in the second half. Yeah, David, uh, the snap was uh, Aaron snap. He corralled it at about the two or the three. Had he just fallen on it, his, uh, he was running to get to it. He didn't feel he could get on it cleanly, so he carried it into the end zone, tried to pick it up and uh, make some type of disheveling throw to get it out of the end zone. The referees quickly threw the penalty with that ball being thrown at the, in the end zone. It carries an automatic, if it's an intentional grounding, an automatic safety on that particular play. You see it right here. He has it picked up in about the three, then he goes into the end zone. His knee almost may have been down as well. Yep. Jason Soistman, the head referee, takes another look at it. New in the MEAC this year, instant replay is optional for schools. It will be mandated next year, but at Daytona Stadium, we've had a replay. Now in the third game for BCU at home this year, and honestly, Larry, this is the second replay today. I think we've had three total this season. Yeah, that's about right, Nolan. You're so right. Um, but the, again, this, the technology is there. It's great if you have a chance to utilize it and, and be certain to get these calls correct. And so that's where they're going over right now. Um, here's that replay again. Let's see if his knee is actually down. Now, JT was down that way. Let's see if we can check in with JT, and he got a look at it. JT, what'd you see? All right, guys. It's, it's catastrophe right now. The Wildcats, they're in the rumble right now. These guys are not focused. They Honestly, I'll tell you what's going on. It's, it's just too much miscommunication right now. We're just going to continue to watch and continue just hope that the guys can just pull it together. We have plenty of time, though. Plenty of time. All right, so that is a confirmed safety off the intentional grounding. 28 to 10, North Carolina 8 leads Bethune Cookman, 342 here in the third. And now the Wildcats will punt to A&T following the safety. That's an automatic call, Nolan. Any kind of a, mm -hmm. any kind of a hold or an intentional grounding penalty in the end zone will accompany, uh, be accompanied with a safety there. So they were just really checking to see if they had missed something, but they got it right uh, on the replay. They actually got it right live and had the proper call. Yep. So Francis, the big booter out of Miami, will punt from left to right. Aggies have two men that are back shy of the 20. Wilson to the far side. And the kick. A spiraling one, bounces at the 31. Wilson jumps and takes to the 30, cuts to the right side of the 35, breaks tackle at the 40, towards the anti sideline at the 45, and he gets out of bounds around midfield. So the Aggies, again, will have prime starting field position with an 18-point lead, 28 to 10, 333 to go in this third quarter. Well, that was a big play there, that uh, errant snap, but I was like you, Nolan. I didn't think everybody got set, mm -hmm. set on that, uh, but the snap got away from David. The Aggies get two points out of it. Again, the Wildcat defense put in a situation following the uh, the exchange on the punt there. Uh, the kickoff, if you would call that. It's a punt on the safety, but they get it out to the 50-yard line. The Aggies have one first down in this third quarter. 11 class pays, four rushes. Carter in the gun. Keeps it out to the right side, across the 50, across the 45, down that right hash, and Table topped by Kennedy and Dukeway at the 42. He'll gain eight yards in the play on his own read keeper against Martin. He's a big, big quarterback. He rumbles down there for about eight yards. Two receivers stacked on top of each other on either side from the right hash. The shotgun snap. This time he gives to Martin, who bounces off a blocker and then gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by 31, Devin James, the Mike backer for no gain. No gain. Great job by Devin that time stepping in there, and the Wildcats really stout at the point of attack, not giving up much there. Third down on about two. Aggies have only converted one of seven third down attempts throughout this ball game. Under three minutes left in the third, a and 28, BCU 10. Carter will have trips out to the left. We'll go Bell, Hunt, and Wilson. Cartwright is tailback. The shotgun snap. Fakes to Carter. Keeps right side of first down and more across the 35 and spins out to the 31. Carter has the second first down of the third quarter for the visitors out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Trips to the right, or left rather. Uh, they run away from the trips. He keeps it off of the RPO, the run pass option. And he almost busts that thing. He gets it down to about the 20-yard uh, yard line. 
31 to be exact. First and 10 at the Wildcat 31. And again, trips out to the left. One receiver right for North Carolina A&T. That's Bell. Martin the tailback for Carter. Now the tight end Hill motions behind the left tackle. The shotgun snap gives to Martin. Counters out to the right at the 30. Gets to the 29 and leans out to about the 28. Tackled on the edge by Bam Laguerre, number 29 of Bethune-Cookman. Give him about three right there. Laguerre coming up from the run back, running support, defense and back position to knock him down after that gain. Aggies trying to capitalize after the safety, leading 28 to 10 on second down and seven to go. Keep it on the ground as they go right up the middle and nothing there. Martin is stuffed by big old 50, Uriah Gilbert. Yeah, Uriah playing really, really well in the Martin interior Martin of that Martin. Wildcat line, Martin. holding his position well. Just a sophomore out of Trinity, of Cali Trinity, Christian High School, mm -hmm. Trinity Prep High School, rather. Fourth tackle for him. He had a season high five last week. Third and eight to go for the Aggies, up by 18. A hard count by Carter now looks to the right. Cartwright's his tailback. He goes three receivers to the left. It will go Wilson, Hicklin, and Hunt. The dangerous Leslie split out to the right. Four down linemen, one backer in the box for the Cats. The shotgun snap to Carter. Under pressure, and he sets back at the 35-yard line. Dropped by Marquez for number 48. Well, I tell you, Marquez is playing well. He comes off that edge there, does a great job, does a junior, and uh, we're able to knock him down back to the 35-yard line. That's probably outside of the field goal range, yep. so they'll probably go for this thing on fourth down. This would be a 52-yarder. The season long for Ruiz is 43, and he just missed a 40-yarder. Well, they may decide to just punt it away here. So the Wildcat defense is pitching a shutout in this third quarter. Two points for the Aggies came on a safety off an intentional grounding call. And Rivers will await the snap at midfield. Keevon Mitchell stands back at the 10. We have to take a timeout, but we didn't have the right package on the field. On fourth down and 14 to go, the Cats will burn their first time out. Eight seconds remaining in this third quarter. But you mentioned, Nolan, the, the, the defense has been put in a lot of tough yep. positions. Sutton change right here, and uh, they've actually uh, done really well the second half, playing really well with their backs against the wall. It's the, uh, the offense. We've been not been able to solve the problem with that stout A&T defense. And, again, Akivas gets hurt. Uh, I, I think he's off on his own power, but I, I don't see him on the on the field. He might be still out there, but I don't see him in that. Both field. starting quarterbacks are out. We have not seen any action from number seven, Lamar Reynard, the defending MIAC Offensive Player of the Year. It's been all number 10, Kyleel Carter, for the Aggies here in this third quarter. The snap to Rivers. Cats play the safe return. A high punt here. And it will land a few yards deep into the end zone, roll out the back side, and Bethune-Cookman will take possession. Following the break of the third quarter, the Cats look for a comeback. a and looks to clamp down and hold on to second place in the MEAC. Fourth quarter up next from Daytona. It's MEAC football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Stroker. We'll start the fourth quarter between a pair of two and one MEAC teams. 28 to 10, North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman. Cats the football following the touchback. Roll to the right for Israel. Scrambling at the 10, throws right sideline into the Aggie sideline. It'll be second down and 10 for the Cats. Larry, you just got to look at some of the stats through three quarters. What stands out to you? Well, the Wildcat uh, defense certainly playing really well, but the statistics say that the A&T defense has been playing well all day long there. We get the one touchdown. I'm looking at the uh, time of possession is not bad, 24 to 20. It's just that the Aggies uh, have done a great job, more balanced all across the board. Second down and 10, the shotgun snap to Israel. Four-man rush, slips out of a sack, runs to the 20. At the 25, he jukes and tumbles forward to the 30-yard line. They'll spot him at 29. It'll be third down and about a yard to go for Bethune-Cookman. Had he not lost his footing there, he might have gotten the first to 10. Third and short for the Cats, 14-30, fourth quarter, a and 28, Bethune-Cookman 10. The Cats have trailed all day but have outscored a and 7-2 to here in the second half. The shotgun snap. Gives Isaac Washington through the middle, stood up. Did he get to the first no. down marker? The spot says no. No. Defensive line buried him right up the middle. The first man to greet him 
was 92. That's the defensive tackle, Jermaine Williams. That's a package problem right there. Uh, if you're going to run that, that play inside on short yardage, you got to have a bigger back than Isaac in there. Uh, a t has really started their point of attack. You might have done better keeping that ball in David's hands, but you're not going to move those guys. Those guys are veterans in that line. It's the third possession for David Israel, and he's only picked up one first down since Akevius Williams went out with an injury following the touchdown. Francis to punt. Baker back to return at the 20. Francis punts into the setting sun to our left. The snap from Ben comes at the right shoulder. And Giovanni gets off another sky burster down the near side. Baker takes to the 18 near sideline. Jukes the 20 of the block. The 25 at the 30 as he sheds a tackler. A couple of spins in falls out to about the 32. And the Aggies will take over when we come back to the world's most famous beach. Fourth quarter in Daytona. 28 to 8 to 28 to 10, excuse me. A&T on top, MEAC football on ESPN, and the Cat Eye Radio Network. For impact! Hunter Killer, who did R in Theaters Friday. First and 10, North Carolina a and with 13-32. Here in the fourth quarter, Aggies lead at 28-10. Carter in the shotgun. He motions Zachary Leslie from right to left. Cartwright is tailback. He gives to on a sweep to the left side. Jukes at the 30s and dropped back near the line of scrimmage. A good tackle by Trevor Merritt, who loses his cap. A short gain on the play, second and long. Uh, Trevor comes out after that. If you lose your helmet, you have to come out for a play. But he came out really nicely and from run support in his uh, uh, safety position to knock down the uh, running back there. So give him about three yards as they stretch it out, maybe two and a half to three. 24th tackle of the year for the junior safety who came crashing and tackled from his right hip. It's second down and seven to go from the nose of the football, touching the Aggies on 35. The snap to Carter. Reads and gives out to the right side as the tailback gets tabletopped at the 38. That's Cartwright. Gain of just two once again as that BCU defense continues to smash down against this Aggie rushing attack in the second half. They've acquitted themselves very well in the second half. Much better play, much more aggression, much more fire from that Wildcat defense, which uh, was not available to the, the first half. Trenton Bridges. And Mark has four combined for the stop. It's third down and four to go for the Aggies, up 28 to 10. 12.30 ticking down in the fourth quarter. A&T looking to move from left to right. That setting sun, that beautiful orange hue at its back. The winds die down. The lights are on at Daytona Stadium. Martin motions. The snap over the head of Carter. It's back at the 20, and he falls on at the 15. Wow. Big play right there. I thought we might get to it. He, can, he got to it in time and uh, was able to corral it, but it's a substantial loss of about 16 yards. And weirdly enough, something coaches don't want to see here, Larry. Fundamentals have been an issue for both teams and that's something they want to see midway through the season. I mean, this, this, we're late in the season, Nolan. There should be zero deviation on center exchange, even though we're snapping at long distance from quarterback to center or center to quarterback. Rivers to punt. He awaits at the two-yard line. Mitchell's back to return at the 40. The snap comes at his left shoulder. He gets it off. A short punt. Mitchell runs up, lets it bounce to the 48. Rolls inside cat territory inside the 45. Down the far number and down at the 41-yard line. And the Wildcats will have the football with 11.22 to go in regulation. Needing points, trailing A&T by a score of 28-10. No, no, I've been a big fan for years of watching football and listening to football coaches. You never want that football bouncing on the field. That's why I like to have two defenders back there. Uh, the a t defense is really stout enough, but you're playing field position, and uh, you give up an extra 15 yards with that ball bouncing right there. Uh, you had an up back back there with Yvonne to handle a short punt. You could keep it from hitting the ground, but we gave up about at least about yards there with that uh, punt hitting the ground and rolling back to about the 41 yard line. Wildcats have just 15 yards here in the second half. It's the fourth possession for David Israel as Akevius Williams has his left knee iced up in the sideline. Empty set here as the back motions to the right. He's under pressure by Johnson, runs out and he throws it away. 
Taking the smart play there deep into the Aggie sideline. And that's the second straight Wildcat possession that has started with a chase and a throw out. It's second and 10 for BCU. Well, David's bailing at the quarterback position because he's not as familiar with the playbook as Akivis is. In fact, he looks a little bit like Akivis used to look two years ago because he's trusting his legs and not his eyes. Robinson is tailback, a four receiver set from the Wildcat 41 right hash. Receiver moves near side. The snap, Israel steps up, flags down. He breaks out of a sack at the 35, runs out to the 40, and twists his way back to the line of scrimmage. But you have to look at that because he's running that to, to the right. His receivers are to the left. He's got three receivers here. So if he's looking to throw, he's actually throwing to one man. It's a three-by-one look, and that would be to keep on. Penalty is against North Carolina A&T of the five-yard variety. It'll be second down and five for the Wildcats, down 28 to 10, nearing 11 minutes left in the game. I'd rather see him roll to the strong side of the formation where he has three receivers rather than trying to go that way with one receiver. Three receivers are Jackson, Thomas, and Francois in that order from left to right. The shotgun snap. Fakes, throws right side, incomplete, fired a fastball over the head of the intended target, Mitchell, who was around the first down marker of the Aggie 48. Yeah, but he's throwing that in a lot of traffic right there. That's a hope and a prayer inside of that situation, trying to go to keep on on that side with uh, the linebacker playing underneath and the cornerback over the top. They're really bracketing him. And so unless you bring another receiver on that side, which is what we're doing right now, we got a, a, a double slot. We'll come back the other way. I thought we were going to line up over that way, but we're still three by one. Third and five, the Cats are three for 11 on third downs today. Down 28 to 10 in the fourth quarter. The snap to Israel. They rush big time, rolls out to the near side under pressure, squeezes out of the 35, being chased, and he'll make it back to about the 40-yard line. He loses six yards on the play, and it's fourth down again for the Wildcat O. Well, that's just great defense by the Aggies. We tried to roll to the strength of the formation that time, but they brought pressure immediately. David, uh, uncomfortable, tried to get on his horse. The pressure's coming from both the front and back side. He did well to get back to uh, close to the line of scrimmage. Reynolds gets in on the tackle alongside Julian McKnight, and Giovanni Francis has punted one too many times for the preference of head coach Terry Sims. Under 10 minutes left here in the ball game. Snap in his kick, the righty with another beauty here as it lands at the 20-yard line, picked up by Baker at the 15, and it'll be marked there at the 15-yard line. He stepped saying out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. Yep, right picked there. it up off a of bounce. So the Aggies will have it, and we come back under 10 minutes left in the game. A&T leads 28 to 10. It's MEAC football on ESPN and the Cat Eye Radio Network. It's been a defensive slugfest here in the second half. 28 to 10, North Carolina A&T leads. 9:49 left in the ball game. Aggies have it at their own 15, and just an appropriate start after the timeout. False start by A&T. This game has seen its fair share of penalties. That's the eighth against the Aggies now for 60 yards. BCU has been penalized six times, equidistant for 60 yards. Yeah, as efficient as the Aggies were the first half, they're sleepwalking the second half with uh, middle mistakes. Carter's taking every snap at the signal caller spot. He's back on first and 15 in the shotgun. On a zone read, keeps to the right side, now throws. Bell catches at the 30-yard line, at the 35 at the 40, down the seam, and tackled from behind at the 49-yard line as he gets right over Bam Laguerre, and the Aggies have the third completion by Kyle Eel Carter, his longest gain. He had 18 yards prior to that strike that gets it down to the 48. That was an RPO look that time. <laughs> And he uh, beat Bam. He caught Bam peeking in the backfield that time. And Bell was able to uh, actually get better uh, positioning for the football and uh, had to run him down at about the 47-yard 40, uh, line. 38 yards through the year from Carter to Bell. First and 10 for the Aggies. BCU puts four men at the line of scrimmage, three backers in the box. Carter out of the shotgun, play fix, throws out to the left side, caught at the 50-yard line, and he's tackled at the 45, Ty Peters. And Trevor Merritt bring down the slot receiver number four, Isaiah Hicklin, a redshirt junior out of Monroe, South Carolina. Yeah, Hicklin's working on the slot that time as he's working uh, against the, uh, the strong safety in there, and uh, they get it out for about seven yards. 
Second down and three to go for the Aggies on the left hash as A&T drives from left to right up 28 to 10. Under nine minutes to go in the ball game. A shotgun snap to Carter. Fakes, he rolls to the right, fires behind his receiver Hicklin at the Wildcat 40 yard line. Another RPO, he actually had him, but it was an errant throw that time by the quarterback setting up a fourth, a third down and about third down and about four, three and a half to four right here. 8.30 left in this football game. But the Wildcat defense, as you said, Nolan, uh, between the break has played pretty well on the second half, uh, holding these the guys offense, to just the safety. Yep, the offense has not scored for A&T in this second half. Aggies are 2 of 10 on third downs today. Carter's in the gun, three receivers to the right. Along the left hash, the snap. He keeps right up the middle, crosses the 45, and he's down maybe about a half yard short of the first down marker based on the spot from the far side. He'll be half yard short, but uh, a t will not punt the football. They'll go for this on fourth and ten. They'll, I mean, fourth and one. They'll just actually line up and uh, probably sneak this. A big quarterback following that big line. Aggies are one for two on fourth down. The snap, a quarterback sneak, and he's got it to the 41-yard line. Didn't need much, didn't get much, but he got the first and ten. Keep that uh, clock running, and uh, the Aggies move the chains again. It will take the clock under eight minutes in the scoreboard down in the end zone to our right. North Carolina A&T 28, Bethune-Cookman 10. Aggies led 26-3 at the break. Big physical football team of the Aggies. Like I said, three by one. Last time they showed this formation, they ran into the boundary. Three receivers on that short side of the field. Martin the tailback for Carter, tied in Hill to the right. Here's the shotgun snap, play fix, throws out to that far side, caught at the 40-yard line, gets to the 35, the 30, and then more. Down near the 25-yard line on a quick little bubble screen, Zachary Leslie, number 19. Yep, they ran the 3-by-1 or 3-by-1 uh, with the trips to the boundary, and they run the bubble screen. Big receivers, as I said, Nolan, all these guys over 6 feet, 6'1", six 6'2", six and they're hard to bring down. Leslie Hall's in his fourth catch and over 50 yards receiving. Similar formation for Martin. Who gives it to Cartwright, counters to the left of the 25, dance to the 20s, he breaks a tackle inside the 15, and he's right near the first down marker for the Aggies. I think they're going to give it to him, he's right there. Needed the 14, he's, he's slightly... and he's about a half yard short. So that football just crosses the 15-yard line along the left hash. Aggies lead 28-10, to 10, and they try to pull in guard who got a quick start. That was 77, Briante Matthews, the graduate, 6'5", 321. Well, we may have offset, offsetting penalties because we're going to get hit with illegal participation. One of our guys didn't get off the field in time. Prior to the illegal substitution being called, timeout, Duke Cookman. It's called by the player number 96. 30 second timeout. And so Jerome Howard, number 96, gets the timeout. Mm -hmm. 28 to 10, the Aggies lead the Wildcats, and with that, we'll step aside as well. 6:48 to go in this one. A&T with the lead late in Daytona. It's the Miac on the Miac Digital Network, ESPN, and the Cat Eye. So don't be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. And we welcome you back in. It's second down and short for Bethune-Cookman's defense facing this North Carolina A&T offense. West that, for the first time here in the second half, has moved the football well. They have. They've got a great drive going right here. Do the Aggies, and they're down at about the 14, 15 yard line. Second down and short, 28 to 10. A&T leads 648. Carter. Fakes, keeps left side, throws left pylon, caught on a jumping catch, touchdown North Carolina A&T. Elijah Bell has his third receiving score of 2018, and Carter tosses his fourth touchdown. It's 34 to 10 Aggies with 6:43 to go here in the game. Just a simple RPO, and they thought, and when they get in the red zone, they throw these 50-50 jump ball passes, and Bell is. As big as you're going to find as a receiver, big bodied, 6'2", and about two, 220. So he knows how to position himself like a basketball player. Out jumps us for the football. Snap, hold, and the kick by Ruiz is true. 35-10 to 10, North Carolina A&T leads with 6.43 to go here in the ball game. With that, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Cat Eye Radio Network.
good look at the pride. The marching Wildcats featured in Netflix's Marching Orders docu-series. Take a look at that if you haven't already. Great profile of the band under Hall of Famer Donovan Wells. Here in the booth, Hall of Famer Larry Wesley to my right. Jamaris Tompkins on the sidelines. Larry Steele, the WELE flagship studio. Bruce Dunn, Derry McCaskill, Arian Coleman, and our Cat Eye students with us here in our ESPN3 production. As always, every Cat Eye production is run by students. You do a great job, and uh, certainly the job that Donovan Wells does is Hall of Fame. Rogers to kick off from left to right. Robinson back to return inside the five. Puts total leather with his right spike. Spins to the far side, taking to the three. Robinson the 10 at the 15, the 20. And he's twisted the 25, breaks the tackle, still on his feet. And then the Aggies bury him back at the 25. Forward progress to the 26 and a half where this Wildcat offense looks to get something going under David Israel, who came in to replace an injured Akevius Williams in the third quarter. I continue to be amazed by, uh, ja, uh, by, by uh, the way that Jimmy runs those kicks back. He... Uh, Hits the wall really well there. The first line of defense, when they hit it, they don't tackle him. He bounces off of him. He's a very strong runner, and uh, you have to rally to him because if you turn him loose, he'll be off to the races. That time the Aggies did a good job of corralling him twice to finally get him to the ground. Israel in the empty set, three receivers right, two to the left. Forward down lineman for the Aggies. The shotgun snap. There was a quick screen to the right side. Batted down incomplete along that right side of the line of scrimmage by 95 for North Carolina a and Julian McKnight. Well, that time uh, we were trying to run the bubble screen over there, but simply David just did not get the football uh, up high enough. It was batted down by those big de- one of those big defensive ends for the Aggies. Like I said, they're, they're lean, physical, and mean, and very aggressive at that line of scrimmage. Israel now just one of six passing for 12 yards in an INT. Another empty set for Israel. Blitz coming, throws near side, caught at the 34-yard line. And then he's pushed out of bounds. That's Jimmy Robinson. And it'll be third down and about two to go for the Cats. Well, I tell you, Jimmy's played his heart out today, both on special teams, offensively, as a receiver, as a running back. He, he's done everything he could. I tell you, he's been a one-man record. crew. hasn't had a lot of help. But he's given it all he had. Three catches for 19 yards. Another five-receiver formation. Blitz coming. It's Israel who throws, and it's incomplete at the 40-yard line. Had a man wide open. That was Robinson. And didn't get his helmet squared around in time in front of his own sideline. Yep. Uh, that time we're not on the same uh, same page. David threw a great pass to him, but Jimmy hadn't quite gotten his head around. He was in a three-by-one set. Should have been caught for a first and ten. But uh, just like that, the Wildcats will have to punt it back again. Giovanni Francis is going to have to have his leg ice, ice down at night. Nolan. Seven been... punts averaging 46.1 yards. That would lead the MEAC along of 53 today. His first was blocked, though, and the Aggies haven't looked back since. Awaits at his own 20-yard line, punts right to left. Snap comes waist time. Righty gets it off, a high but shorter one. Baker bobbles at the 27, catches the 30, loses at the 35, a fight for the football. Wildcats point in their black jerseys saying they have the football. No signal yet from the stripes. Well, everybody starts to point, I can tell you that. But uh, watch watch the tempers, guys. Hold on. There's some skirmishing as well on the backside of the scrum. It's an all-out fight between the black and the white jerseys. BCU points, still no call from the refs. 5.51 left in the game, 35-10, to 10, A&T leads. That ball must be uh, like a good piece of meat down there, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> They're really going after it. They signal a t has it. Well, the reactions of the a t has it. We haven't seen a signal yet. And I believe that's going to be a t football. Still no signal. And the turner was trying to control it. Uh, never did have a good handle of it. It went, it went to the ground, and everybody got on top of it. But it looks like mm-hmm. they're going to give it to A&T, even though we didn't get a real, sig- a real signal from the officiating crew yet. They're going to mark it at about the 35. It looks like where they're going to put it in play. Here kick, we go. Holding, offense, number 54. The penalties decline. Be first down for North Carolina A&T. Holding on Deontay Mayo. I don't know what that was. Uh, I guess that was on the alignment when they were getting ready to snap the football. 
but the Aggies will take care of it at about the 35 yard the line. Okay. All right, so they're going to take another look at it. A lot to sort out on mm -hmm. that particular play there. Let's see if we can check back in with our sideline reporter, Jamaris Tompkins, out on the sideline over on the BCU side to get an update on the Wildcats. All right, thanks, Nolan. Just to check in with one of the coaches behind the scene, Coach Carl Frames, personally my running backs coach. Um, listen to him, to him on the sideline. He gave the best advice to the team. That was finish the game, finish the drive, play hard, and just continue to just drive. This is where you find out where your team is made of. If they'll give up, if they just put their heads down, but learning to continue to just drive the ball, continue to finish plays, and just finish till the game is over. That's how you'll find out if your team is made. So Coach Carl Franks, thanks for the word to the team. All right, JT, great words of advice from Carl Franks, former head coach of the Duke Blue Devils. Made his heyday. The University of Florida is the offensive coordinator, led the Gators to a national championship under Coach Spurrier. And we had in attendance today uh, Michael Waddell from the Orlando Apollos, the new Alliance of American oh, Football okay. that's going to start up this spring, led right. by none other than yep. old ball else? coach. Who else? Coach Spurrier. <laughs> How about that? The old ball coach. Yeah, a new outlet for professional football where some Wildcats could appear, as well as a new professional team that will start here in Daytona Beach this spring. So well, if you think about it, Nolan, Florida's a place for football. The weather's perfect down here most, you know, most of the football season at least, if you can avoid the hurricanes. But uh, great <laughs> places to, to play football, and certainly uh, with these leagues popping up, uh, giving some guys who have not gotten that bug out of their system about playing football after the collegiate days are over, just another opportunity. Who knows? It might get some of them up to the big, to the big level mm -hmm. of the NFL. Aggies lead 35 to 10, 551 in the game. Take over at their own 34. Move left to right. A shotgun snap to Carter. He gives to Maine, who squeezes his way past the left side along the 35 to the 39. Called a gain of a spot of the 38. Called a gain of four for the formal Coastal Carolina shot to clear. Second down upcoming for the Aggies. And Larry, where do you go from here for each of these teams? For North Carolina A&T, the Aggies with a win, will advance to 6-2, and two, stay alive for the Celebration Bowl, and move to 3-1 and one in the conference, needing some help yep. to try to get another MEAC championship. What will be their fourth in five years. It goes back to Martin on the ground, who bounces to the right side, lowers his shoulder, and about two yards short of the marker. Well, they got a lot to play for. Everything's still in front of them. Uh, a lot of football left in this season. Lost a heartbreaker last week to uh, Florida A&M. The first loss of the season of Morgan did not count uh, as a MEAC game because of the, the, the removal, of, removal of Hampton to the uh, Big South. So they're still in play are the Aggies, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. They got a great football team. They also have a chance to possibly get an at-large berth to the FD FCS playoffs because they have two quality out-of-conference victories. Third and two for North Carolina A&T. Carter in the shotgun, two men to his left, up back and a tailback who he gives to Martin through the left side. And he rumbles across the 45-yard line. He gained three yards needed too, first and 10 A and T. They run hard, Nolan. They got a big offensive line in front of them. Brandon Parker, their big tackle, and I was playing in the NFL. But uh, this is a new rebuilt offensive line, but you can see the size uh, and the aggression. They come off of that football really, really well. Mm. Very imposing-looking football players. Wildcats are 4-3, and 2-1 and one in the MEAC. We'll get to the point after this. Three receivers to the left here for Carter. A shotgun snap, looks left, throws left side, and it's almost intercepted at the Wildcat 48 in and out of the hands of Henry Miller. But the point I'm trying to get to is this is the time a team that's beat up Akevius Williams has been out for the ball game ever since about midway through the third quarter with a lower body injury. But this team had a bye week coming up next week. Doesn't have that anymore. The Wildcats instead will travel to Lincoln, Nebraska and take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah, and we're pretty banged up ourselves, you know, from that standpoint, uh, not just with the Kivas now, but a lot of guys out. Joe Johnson didn't play today for us, and, uh, you know, uh, that that's a big loss right there, certainly from his defensive standpoint. Carter and Carter in the backfield. Play fake throws left side caught by Bell to Ryan Scrimmage. Gets the 50 along the sideline and tackled near the first down marker. They're going to give him about eight and a half on the play. And 
just maybe a yard to go for the Aggies to move the sticks once again up 35 to 10 under four minutes left in the ball game driving left to right in your radio dial yeah, this is a ball club we're playing against right now with national champions last year black college national champions and they had a lot of holdovers returning uh, for this 2018 season and they look really good as I said the Aggies are uh, coached by a guy we know Sam Washington who used to coach here with, with Bethune Cook in the back at uh, the beginning of the game uh, we honored the uh, 1988 team and Sam came out of the locker room to be with the Cats. Quick muddle huddle on third and short. Carter keeps behind Cartwright and gets a first down out to the Wildcat 42-yard line. He's tripped up by Devin James and Deron Maxwell, but you're right about Sam Washington, who was a younger coach, was here at Bethune-Cookman, part of that 88 championship team, as you said, and he's had a top-20 defense every year since his arrival to Greensboro, but one year, but they were still top-30 last year fourth nationally in defense and tonight the Aggie defense has gotten it done again. No question about it. Sam uh, played football with Larry a little and uh, when Larry got the job here at Bethune-Cookman he brought Sam up to coach uh, defense with us and they did a great job for us. First and ten Aggies at the Wildcat 42. Carter's in the shotgun. Cartwright to his left. Give it to him on a sweep out to the right side. Gets the Wildcat 45 and twisted down at about the 42. So not much going there. It'll be second down and 10 for the Aggies as the sun sets on us yep, here Kennedy in Daytona Beach. Up. A beautiful one out to the left. Yeah, Kennedy came up that time, Nolan, from his safety position to make that tackle. And uh, no gain on the play. It was a uh, play run into the Wildcat defense, one of the sweeps by the A&T uh, offense, and we get him down for no gain. Minute 59 and counting left in this football game. Carter and Cartwright in the backfield. Simpson, the up back to the left. Cats load up the box. Carter keeps to the right side, and he's met in the backfield and stopped by Trenton Bridges. Marquez for the defensive end, pushed him in. Stay home that time. Marquez did, came up. Marquez knocked him down. Uh, got a great push off the edge there. He set the edge and uh, was waiting for the quarterback when he came down the line of scrimmage. So, Larry, if you're Bethune Cookman looking ahead, don't know the status of Akevius Williams, but if this is a David Israel-led offense into Nebraska, how do you think that changes the BCUO? What might it look like? Is it more the same, or does it alternate some? Well, I think uh, I think they'll play to his strengths. Uh, he does some of the same things that, that uh, uh, Akevius can do, but uh, got to get that passing game going a little bit better on, on David's part. Third and 13 for the Aggies, moving left to right at the Wildcat 45, giving the ground to Cartwright. He sheds two tacklers, cuts the left of the 45, bounces at the 40. Still bringing defender with him across the 35 and down to the 34. That'd be fourth and about two with under a minute to go. They'll probably run it right here, or maybe, maybe just take a D. They need to snap it one more time. Mm -hmm. About a 10 second difference between the game clock and the play clock. Card in the Aggies huddle up. North Carolina A&T will move to 6-2 on the year. 3-1 in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. Bethune-Cookman will see its three-game win streak come to a close. Fall to 4-4 four and four, and an even 2-2 two and two in the MIA. Carter's in the shotgun. Three other men in the backfield. An early movement from the tight end hill from the right side. Probably have to snap it one more time after that uh, movement by Hill. Nine seconds showing on the uh, scoreboard remaining in this football game. Appreciate everyone joining us today on ESPN3 and the Cat Eye Radio Network. Woody, Tim, Allison, they're joining us today. Larry, you had quite a crowd at the Hall of Fame ceremony yeah, last night. Yeah, great, great, great Hall of Fame program last night. Great weekend, a chance to meet and greet some new and old friends. And so uh, we cap it off tonight with this football game. Uh, looks like uh, Terry and those are going across the field with nine seconds still left on the clock. There's a 10-second runoff for the game clock. The game is over. Yep, 10 second runoff on the penalty, right. and that will do it. North Carolina A&T winners today over Bethune-Cookman. Our final score, the Aggies 35, the Wildcats 10. For Larry Wesley, I'm Nolan Alexander, saying good night from Daytona Beach, Florida. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Post game on the Cat Eye Radio Network comes up next.
Thank you, Keen. I appreciate it.